from Yarm to Yibby, Harrington to Horsley Hill, Swarwell to Silverlink, Steve and Rye, the Northeast Footy Breakfast. Right across the Northeast, the red, the tune, and the cat. Oh, here we go, fellas. Not a curry in sight. Say, I tell you, no. what, it seems to have cleared my pipes out. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, mate. Me too. But uh, it was all in all in a good cause yesterday yeah, in Raval. Well, big cause, thank you to the uh, manager and the staff. And Sarah, who coordinated it all, big thank you to getting us down there and uh, getting the staff in. The chef was was fantastic. And and Dave, you were uh, you actually enjoyed the madras? Mate, that was magnificent. Uh, I didn't have a kid's belly for once. It was fantastic. Get it into you. That's what I say. It was it was good grub. I've got to say, it was really tasty grub. And you know, my my brother and my dad, bless him, he's no longer with us. My my dad, but they used to do all this madras, and you'd see sweat pouring out of their brows every single pore of their body as they're eating it. And I'd look at them and go, why on earth would you want to even put yourself through that? And then, of course, my brother being a typical Teesside lad, gets onto the fowls and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, he's, he's like a mouthful and going, oh, oh, oh. And I'm thinking, nah. But that madras yesterday, Steve, was magnificent. It was lovely. It was it was, and uh, we picked a good day to go as well. I mean, you know, it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a dark, cloudy day. It was it was a, a lovely day. The sun sun started to there shine across the Middlesbrough Build Time Bridge. That's it. Oh yes, and, yes, uh, yes, 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 there it is. There it is. Yes. <laughs> we love it. We love it. <laughs> uh, but then when darkness fell, the drones came out once again and uh, gave a spectacular display uh, over St James's Park love ahead. That of tomorrow night's Champions League game against PSG and, and to be honest that, that really was a, a great effort by Seller who've come on board of course as uh, shirt sponsors uh, just to see that I mean I've seen lots of videos lots of pictures photographs taken by supporters uh, crowds of people uh, blocking streets in Newcastle mm. just to get a better view but um, just a nice gesture and something, something a bit different a, a positive story amongst the football community after so much negativity in the last 48 hours oh, don't worry, the, we'll change the horrendous it. scenes the horrendous scenes down at uh, Sheffield with yeah. with Bradley Lowry and um, you know the racism that we're seeing at Middlesbrough it was nice to get a positive football story and see people going out you know embracing something which was provided by by a shirt sponsor so well done Seller on that my goodness Praise yeah, coming amazing. to sell yeah. it. Yeah, indeed. Yep. indeed. It did look it's, good. Uh, I've got to be honest. It did it, look it good. Did. Yeah. It did. It's a long shout, though, from uh, from the days where we had Afonso Alves and the Brazilian dancers on the Riverside pitch <laughs> announcing <laughs> announcing the Brazilians' arrival. Uh, I can't wait for uh, the return to, especially, you know, with the Carabao Cup and the, the money involved. And Sorry, mate. The I don't Carab- want to go the into Carabao it too what? much. The Carabao what? The, the Carabao Champions League Cup. That's the one. That's um, the Carabao one, Champions yes. League Cup. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so... I mean, you know, with all the players getting, you know, their own, you know, their own images and stuff like that when we, you know, when we take on Exeter away. So yeah. uh, similar story there for the Borough, obviously. Um, and, um, you know, it's good to see Newcastle kind of catching up, I guess, with, yeah. the, with the smaller Champions League. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> Hey, and well done, well, well done this, you know, this bit of history. I like it. I like a bit of history, Dave. And when you started going on about um, Mott Hay and Anderson building the Tain Bridge, right, from Middlesbrough. Building. Have constru- you heard that? Have you heard that? He's well, twisted it already. It was actually built by <laughs> Dolman Long and Company of Middlesbrough. They were the architects, mate. They just designed it. All <laughs> ah, right, OK. So, but they were involved in most bridges. So no the wonder that they got involved with the Tain Bridge. That's it, mate. There's T-Siders all over the place. Even Ryan. There are, yeah. You know, Ryan didn't yep. realise it, but there were that many smoggies over in Sydney building that bridge. Yeah. They impregnated every single Australian woman. So therefore, <laughs> there are T-side genes all over the world. All over yeah. the world, I'm telling you. So I'm is it possible you. that there's a Middlesbrough like rosette or something like buried in the foundations of the Tame Bridge? Nah. Mate, I'm sorry to tell you this, but in your bloodline there are smoggies. There's got to be. We were all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> gonna have to, I think whilst they're cleaning it, they're going to have to dismantle it and find some of this rogue stuff that's been done. <laughs> there's actually, there is actually a, a borough shirt in the Wembley Arch because um, it was a Teesside company that were involved in building that. When the new... Oh, hang on a second. I'll just get rid of that music. Tom Grennan's trying to sing while we're talking. That's very rude of him. <laughs> shut up, Tom. Um, yeah, shut up, mate. Come on, Tom. Yeah, uh, behave yourself. Um, yeah, the, there was a T-Sad company involved in the build of the Wembley Arch when the new stadium was built not so long ago at a vast amount of money. Um, 
and yeah, the old the old Boris shirt was uh, was was hidden inside the arch. So at least we got some permanent representation at Wembley every single cup final. Yeah, and I, I mean, I do know as well the Stadium of Light. Obviously, when that was built at Sunderland, yeah. a lot of Geordies were working on that, and I think we saw a, a similar thing. You know, scarves and a shirt, the odd shirt <laughs> buried the under fans. the pitch. Well, it's it's a crack. It's what you do, isn't it? I guess you know there'll be, and I'm sure there'll be <laughs> Sunderland fans working on something Newcastle related at some point. They've done exactly the same. It's uh, yeah, it's just leaving your little uh, leaving your little print, isn't it, on, on on somebody else's stadium? It always creates a bit of a, a buzz, like definitely. leaving your mark. It's like a cat peeing up against some a dog peeing up against somewhere or a cat spraying football fans <laughs> exactly the same we we spray all over the place just differently yeah yeah no indeed. definitely and hey yeah well done to chelsea they finally learned how to, oh. uh, to win a game of football wow. last night wow. uh, after spending a, after spending over a billion uh, pounds on bringing in new players um, Pochettino finally found a, a formula that worked in the uh, the, the Fulham Chelsea derby um, Mudrick getting a goal in the 18th minute and Broja scoring in the 19th minute so two goals in a minute uh, so Chelsea win 2-0 last night I mean, in it's, the, uh, the it's, Premier League they came very close to not being ha- not being able to have a goal of the month for September because they just yep. didn't score for you know <laughs> three quarters of it. Um, so well, at least took them up to eleventh. I mean that you know yeah. that that's a that's a major that's a major step in the right direction. But <laughs> on Twitter, on, on Twitter last night, fair play to Domino's Pizza. Um, I don't know whether you saw this, but outside <laughs> yeah. Craven Cottage, they parked an advertising van, um, and on it uh, was that thing that we talked about last week, and it said. Pizza sold since Chelsea's last league goal, 9,914,100. Love it. Love it. Great bit of advertising. Can I just, can I, can I just point out to, uh, to all those Northeast footy breakfast fans who are listening on the cat, look out for the cat girls this weekend at the derby. Uh, because because cat girls. the cat girls were doing something similar. We're doing something similar on Weir Side, man. Oh. You could win yourself a hundred quid just by taking a selfie with the cat girls. We shall reveal more later. Oh, wow! Right, okay, look at that. Well, where's the where's the uh, where's the, so is the Borough girls and Magpie girls? <laughs> there will be. All right, there will okay. be, mate. There will okay, be. just yeah, okay. hang on, hang on. Give us give us a chance. Give us a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it keeps us in the dark, right? We don't know anything about this. It does, yeah. I've got mushroom I've got mentality. no idea what's going on. Mushroom mentality. Yeah. Couple of good-looking girls dressed in red and white, uh, wandering Keep around the Stade de Lume and the pubs before and giving out information on this very show. This very show and encouraging people to take selfies. Tag it onto the Cats Facebook page and uh, one lucky winner will be pulled out at random. It will give them 100 quid. How about that? That sounds fantastic. Yes. Great stuff. Love it. What a chump opportunity. But it's still not going to persuade me to get down there, I'm afraid. Yeah, I thought it wasn't enough, mate. How much would it take <laughs> for you to go to Sunderland, wear a red and white shirts? It would never happen, mate. And it would never no. happen. A million quid? Nope, I would say no. Thank you, but no thanks. No, really? uh, mo- Seriously, money, million quid? Money money is not my god, and uh, yeah, you could stick that where the sun don't shine, because there's no <laughs> way in the world I would wear a red and white top for love, no money, or for charity, I'm afraid. I'm with Alan Shearer on this. I remember him being on a programme on BBC One, and uh, they tried to get him to wear it for charity. I think it was Children in Need, and Alan wouldn't do it either. So, uh, yeah, I'm afraid there's some things you just wouldn't do for money. Mate, if your bank love balance it. is comparable, I'll understand it. But no, ten million. Not. I'll give you ten million. Will you do it? No, thank you. Million. No, thank you. I'm sure Jeez. I'll be able to make, wow. make that make that doing this show, mate. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> now you've revealed there our little is. secret. Our there little secret is. is out. Oh, come on. I, if I'm <laughs> saying, which accounts are paying you? I'm going to have to have a word with those girls this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump does me account. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in some strife this morning, isn't he? Wow! Oh, when yeah, is I'm he glad not? we're doing doing you show, sure, lads. Uh, I'm glad we're doing doing you oh show. We're giving, we're giving your cas- we're giving your Castle Sunderland and Middlesbrough fans some respite from the uh, the Tory party conference as well. Oh. Which is, I put the news on this morning, like I normally do, before I get up and speak to you lads and and speak to everybody out there. And uh, it's just full of uh, politics. And I just thought, wow, I'm so glad we do this Yuck. show now. It gives us yeah. gives us and the rest of the northeast a respite. Uh, from those uh, from those ridiculous things that, that, that go on on the news and it's uh, yeah two hours of football let's get into it 
lads. Well, mate, you should have been sticking yeah, your head out the window. You should, you should. I mean, poor Rye can't do this because the sun's shining where he is. But um, <laughs> uh, Steve, if you just stuck your head out the window this morning, this is a bit of culture now coming. A bit of culture All coming right. into the show. You would have noticed next to the moon was Venus. Uh, with a pair of binoculars between Venus and the moon, you'd have been able to see the planet Uranus. And then in there, and you've got to be very careful how you pronounce that, particularly on yeah, Tuesday morning you after Curry the Big Shot. Wait, but careful. And, and uh, in the on the uh, the eastern part of the sky, you would have seen uh, the planet Jupiter. Actually, no, let's get it right. Jupiter was under the moon. It was Venus in the eastern sky. So there you go. Planetary display, astronomy on the show this morning. How cultured are we? From Patrick Mauer of uh, Middlesbrough. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> that was my Patrick Moore impression. It was crap, but it was it was an impression. We've got to pay respect to uh, Franny Lee as mm. well this morning because uh, Franny Lee, yeah. um, whether you whether you were, whether you liked him or not, was a was a footballing legend. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, interesting fact about Franny Lee, apart from the fact that he he played for Bolton, he played for Manchester City, and he played for Derby County, and of course England. Um, he he gave Peter K. One of his first he jobs. Did. Yeah, he did. Did he yes. really? Yeah. Wow. And he there ran a toilet roll manufacturing business. So there you go. Peter wow. came and healed that once. So there's your, there's your interesting fact about Franny Lee. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, Jeez. Franny, he's had a, a battle with cancer mm. uh, over the yeah. last couple of years. And uh, yeah, he, he passed away yesterday at the age of 79. So uh, thoughts uh, with his family from everybody yeah. in the North East. Oh, the look, he, he was a great footballer in his time. Um, he was a fantastic footballer in his time in the in the light blue of Man City. I mean, he was. Uh, where did he move on to as well? Did he go and play for Bolton as well? He played. Well, he started at Bolton. He started at Bolton. Okay. Goal, uh, did, yeah. 90, 90, yeah. Ninety-two goals, hundred and eighty-nine appearances wow. at Bolton. Then he went to Man City, which is where probably everybody remembers That's where the from. fame. Yeah, yeah, hundred and twelve goals there, two hundred and forty-nine appearances, and then uh, Derby Not County. A bad record, fin- geez. Finished finished his career there. Uh, Sixty-two appearances, twenty-four goals, so five hundred appearances, two hundred and twenty-eight goals. Alf Komanesk. Another one to add to the list of uh, players yeah. who never gets the rec- uh, recognition when we're talking about the top goal scorers in the top league because yeah. uh, records seem to be expunged um, and it's just all about the Premier League. But he's up there; he's in the top ten, and yeah. um, you know he, he he passes quite a few well-known names if you're going to go back in you know back in history. And for England, don't forget he's England. Uh, you know he's England yeah, career. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, he scored ten goals in twenty-seven appearances for England as well. But uh, yeah. he won. He won a bit of silverware in his time um, which you know ultimately is is you know what it's all about um, you know from, from yep. his perspective CBE he also well. holds yep. CBE yeah, holds the English record for the greatest number of penalties uh, scored in a season uh, a feat that earned him the nickname Lee Won Pen uh, because that was the way his name often seemed to appear on the list of goal scorers for, Man- <laughs> uh, for Manchester City uh, in the Sunday newspapers remember them Sunday newspapers oh, I used to go out and get them uh, but yeah, he had a, he had a, also had a, a fight on the pitch with uh, somebody who you wouldn't mess with back in the day, Norman Bite Your Legs Norman Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, so, uh, good but it, it's good to say, I mean, it's very rare. I mean, you know, I know a lot of these footballers from back in the, you know, back in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Yeah. And a lot of them ended up having a, you know, ha- having very little money. Um, you know, that their careers were ended by injury, which nowadays that kind of injury would be easily, easily sorted out. Supermax mm. a prime example. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of these players had to yep. go on and, and reinvent themselves. And the, and the toilet roll story I mentioned earlier was, was where he made his, probably where he made most of his money. He set up a, he set up a company which recited paper mm. and obviously yeah. that manufactured things such as toilet roll kitchen roll etc and that's what made him a millionaire yeah yeah um, he was a very wow. successful businessman yeah and, it, and wow. it gave him the opportunity uh, at, at some point when um, I think it was back in the 90s when uh, when, when Man City were going through a, a rough patch uh, before Qatari money came into the uh, equation <laughs> and he actually became he actually became the major shareholder and the chairman of Man City um, so you know he wow. did he did the lot you, you, you know probably probably somebody who was known as Mr Man City uh, for for a while yeah. you know because he'd, he'd done everything he played for them he'd uh, you know he'd done that and there was a was there an infamous game as well Dave when um, can you remember when the title uh, this is this is probably before all of our times I think but I think it was when Man City had to win the final game of the season to win the title and they had to come to Newcastle um, and they won the match four three. And uh, Lee scored one of the goals. And if I remember rightly, I'm pretty sure that was the same day that Manchester United were relegated. 
Ah. Ah, so the, well, there, there you go. Of, there, was a bit, there was a bit of history in that game because I think, I might be wrong, but Dennis Law played for Manchester City. I think he moved across the Manchester divide. And I, I wasn't sure whether he scored the goal, but it, it might be my memory. I might be wrong. The listeners might correct us. But I know for a fact that they came to, they came to Newcastle and needed to win. They won 4 3. I know Lee scored. But it might have been Dennis Law getting the winner, and he didn't celebrate. Infamous game, that, though. Infamous yeah. game. Wow. Yeah. I'm pretty confident as well, Francis was behind the, uh, the move to the now that he had stadium as well. I'm pretty sure when, obviously, during his tenure as well, if I remember rightly, when he was. Um, he was part of you know the, being the chairman and the owner that um, he was yeah he was putting the club into the you know the obviously yeah. the stronger financial footing back then but I'm pretty confident he carried out um, the move from uh, what was it Main Road I think uh, to Road, yeah. to yeah, to City of Manchester uh, which is now obviously Etihad Stadium so incredible there as well so definitely a Man City legend and one we'll always remember it's always you know it's incredible isn't it to see. Um, you know, some of these legends of the game passing on some, you know, some of these guys that you grow up with and some taken too soon, some having a, you know, a fantastic life as well. But yeah, obviously, you know, a CB um, holder as well. So um, yeah, d- definitely um, did a lot for uh, Man City and sport and, and charity as well. He was definitely, um, he was definitely, you know, help, well, not one to uh, shy away from charity work as well. So yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a sad one to see, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's one thing we can guarantee in life, isn't it? And it comes to us all. You just hope that when when it's your turn, you've at least left some sort of mark on this uh, on this world, so to be remembered by That's it. positively, positively, That's of course, and yeah. and of course, Franny Lee. Yeah, all that he did for City for football, uh, he he certainly did. He's he's one of them. Yeah, and he was a regular as well, wasn't yeah. he? Down at you know down at the yard. I mean, I think he you know he, that's the one thing with with Manchester City. They they do tend to look after the legends, you know. Yeah, um, they do. Yeah, and, and 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 even players who didn't really play for them. I mean, you know, I know Peter Beardsley quite well, and he he only played once for Manchester City. Yet whenever they play Newcastle or they play Liverpool or they play Everton, or any of Peter's ex-clubs, he gets a phone call from Manchester City's corporate team, he gets invited down, and he does the lounges down there because he can speak about the opposition. And I think that's a, you know that's great. And Malcolm McDonald as well. Um, similarly, when, when Arsenal play Newcastle, he always gets that invite to go down because he's a he's an Arsenal legend as well as a Newcastle legend. Yeah, he is. They get him out, they get him on the pitch, they treat him like royalty. And I've... I was I was filming once down at the um, the Emirates, and it was we were filming in a couple of the executive boxes around there. Uh, they, they were they were pretending that the Emirates was Wembley. It was easier to get in, easier access for this film crew, etc. And we went into the stadium, and we went into um, the boxes, and they have like as most of these executive boxes do, they have pictures on the walls of of of, of, of ex players, etc. But in each box there is a. A, a photograph of uh, it, it's obviously mock a mock photograph, but with all the legends in like a team formation, but like an old school photograph. Yeah, and uh, Supermax on there, <laughs> so uh, you know it's it, incredible, really. But yeah, the you know clubs should look after the legends. Newcastle United are starting to do that now after 14 years of Ashley's reign. They, you know, where they, you know, where they ignored them. They tried to ignore the history. You know, Ashley was yeah. putting things off the walls, sticking them in skips, <laughs> and forget about the entertainers. You know, the, you know, this is the here and now. Mm. But now, you know, since since the takeover a couple of years ago, I'm pleased to say that the uh, the owners are now embracing that past, bringing the bringing the players back into the club. Using them in the corporate areas, and that's right. You know, they, they should be, be doing done. that because, yep. yeah, because it's, it's the same at, same at Middlesbrough and Sunderland. You've got to, you've got to remember your past. You know, people like Bernie yeah. Slaven need to be remembered at Middlesbrough. You need to bring them in, and you know, uh, you know, Mugger might be at uh, Sunderland at the moment, but he's still a Borough legend. You've got, you've got to make the door open to these players and and, and welcome them in and look after them and nurture them because they can help you know spread the word of the club they can be ambassadors and it's even more important nowadays getting out and spreading the word further afield to try and bring revenue in from you know from from other other countries yep mm-hmm. i mean you were behind dave that uh, legends match that was going to go ahead obviously unfortunately yeah well we're hoping it's going to yeah we, well we're hoping yeah. it's still going to go ahead this summer so i'm due a conversation with the club in the next few weeks just yeah. to, to try and nail a date now take that i've confirmed uh the date of their their performance at the riverside because it's all about ground yep. availability it's all about season ending you know, will the borough be? You know, the problem last year was the borough left it so late to confirm their place in the playoffs. 
that we didn't know when the season was going to end. And then by that time, yep. it was too late to pull all... Because we're pulling people in from all over the world, including us. I mean, you know, we're talking yep. to Luke Wiltshire and people like that over in Australia. Yep. Um uh, I'm trying to think who else is on that on that list. Obviously, uh, Schwartz is over here now in the UK, so he was the easy one. Yep. Um, Viduk is in, in Zagreb, yep. uh, so yep. he's European based. So that so that wasn't a problem. He's agreed to come over. But yeah, <clears throat> I mean that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it. It's got to it's got to happen this coming summer, or it's not going to happen at all. Yep. Because every year that goes by, and COVID was COVID was the reason behind Mikel Beck um, coming forward, the former Borough player, and yep. saying we need to do something for Teesside to help the recovery. But it was also, yep. COVID was was the real thorn in the side because though the UK recovered and opened up very quickly, you saw what happened in Oz, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, you, yep. and, and your neighbours across the Tasman, New Zealand, they locked down yep. for God knows how long. So the real problem... Yep. One for, of the first countries to do it. Yeah, and the real problem wasn't what was happening in the UK, and the fans probably don't get this. Because I've actually received some stick on social media. Oh, this is never going to happen. It was never going to happen. It was, you know, it was all false promises. But a lot of countries were still locked down after the UK opened yep. up. So we couldn't get people yep. out of the country. Um, you know, and we've, we had to get Janinho out of Brazil. We had to get Emerson out mm. of Brazil. We had to get Hamilton Rickard out of Colombia. We, you know, we had to get Vidmar out of Australia and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't easy. So... Last last year, it could have happened, but it was too short notice to get the players travelling internationally. This year, we've got more of a run at it, so we are hoping that that charity game will definitely go ahead at the Riverside with the club's blessing. And, of course, it was going to be used as the 25th anniversary of the Riverside, which is now probably 28 years old. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, you know, we're going to, we're going to look and, and do our best and tie all that together. But, you know, the whole idea it's, it's is... It's such a hard thing to do. It's it's, it's yeah. a hard thing to do. I mean, I did it. I did it. I did it a couple of times. Well, yeah, I did it twice at um, the Falcons yeah. with Newcastle United, and I worked with a with a like a consortium of people first time round to do the Newcastle United Liverpool game, and I brought you know the entertainers back to play like the the Spice Boys mm. and. The Liverpool team wasn't wasn't the main focus because obviously you know you want to sell the ground out to get to get the Newcastle lads together. So my job was to bring the players back together and promote the event, and um, we did it. We got Kevin. Kevin came back with Terry Mack. We had um, you know we had uh, Alan Shearer. We had Tino. Uh, David Ginola confirmed right at the right at the death. Um, but yeah, it, it was a wonderful day. We did ten thousand tickets, so it was a sellout at the Falcons, and we um, you know we had a great day. Raised mm. uh, I think it was something just short of thirty four grand. We raised for charity. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, wow. I, I always swore I would never do it again, uh, but then I took the job on five years later, <laughs> but I did it on my own, and we did it at the same venue. Um, it was a lot harder doing it on your own, believe yeah. you me, but we did six and a half, seven thousand tickets for the second one. We did Newcastle versus Manchester United, and I, I did it for Alan Shearer's foundation, his yeah. charity, yeah. Um, and we hit £54,000 for charity that uh, that game. Wow. So they're worth doing, yeah. because people do like to see people roll back the years. Um, the first one, though, oh, they definitely I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask you, are you, are you, first of all, are you going to play Dave, and are you going to get right to have a run out? Because oh, we, I, I did it. I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about it. I did it the very, I did it the first time round, and I, I, it's a moment I'll never forget because I, at the time I was, I was Pavel Cernicek's agent. I was doing a bit of agent work with a few of the ex players, getting them jobs, getting them work, and Pavel was the first player that I signed from the entertainers. And on the, on that particular day, um, you know, I, I was added to the, the subs list. Kevin, so Kevin, is, there's a wonderful photo of Kevin writing the team sheet out. My name's right at the bottom, and. Uh, I, I'm not going to repeat what Alan Shearer said, but with five minutes left on the <laughs> clock, um, I, I just got a few shouts of Baldy. And then I was told, <laughs> um, with, with a couple of swear words at the end, it's your turn, it's your turn to go on. I went onto the pitch. I, I went onto the pitch. So I am officially... Kevin Keegan's last ever substitution in football. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I, got, I, wow. went on, I went on to the pitch. Pavel, Pavel came over, gave us a big hug, which lovely photo of that. I went off. I went on, sorry. He came off. And um, I was only on the pitch five minutes. Anthony Hutton from Big Brother, the winner of Big Brother, comes charging through and oh, oh, oh. dives. I, I, well, I went in goal, obviously. I, took, I, I, I went for the ball. I got the ball. Good the referee man. gave a penalty against us. 
Well, oh, quite rightly, you're a Newcastle fan. <laughs> so I conceded a penalty in the last in the last minute. So we got beat. So we got beat. We got beaten that game. It was four one to Liverpool. They weren't playing the game like, and I, and and the penalty was the penalty was ridiculous. The, he says, "Which side do you want it on?" I can't even remember who took the penalty now. Which side do you want it on? I said, "Stick it on my left." I went right, and he put it on the left. And he said, "Well, you said you wanted it on your left." <laughs> but anyway, it was great experience, and and honestly, those kind of games that always they worth are. doing. That there are a lot of there are a lot of hard work to organise, but. Um, Good luck with it, Dave. I hope you can get it off the ground because you know you should yeah. do something like that, and the people, the people of Middlesbrough should get behind it. And you should know about Law Nineteen being "Thou shalt give penalties against Newcastle fans." It's in the book. It's written down. <laughs> um, yeah, no, mate. I mean, the hard work, the hard work's effectively being done because we were trying to get this pulled together when we thought the world was coming out of lockdown. So I have actually spoken to every single player. Mind you, it was an email conversation with Ravenelli. Um, and 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 just about every single player is like. I mean, even the likes of John Hendry, who comes onto the the, the three legends on a Friday night, uh, as a bit of a sub for for Lee Clark and Craig Ignat. You know, H is going. I can't possibly run these days. I went, but H, just come on for ten minutes, cameo appearance. You know, or, or playing the, the you know the warm up game, the charity game that's going to be before. And he went, yeah, that's a great idea. But I'm only walking. I'm telling you. So you've got people like that. Even Dukes, the Duke, uh, the Duke was saying, I'm not fit anymore. You know, I can't possibly play football. No, and it's all about being there. It's all about you yeah. know taking part. And well, um, we'll sell the Riverside out three times over because I've spoken to the little fella a couple of times. Um, so Janino is well up for it. Uh, Emerson, yeah. absolutely. We found the likes of Jeremy uh, in Cameroon, Joseph Job. You know, we've got the Hasselbanks, the 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 Frank Cadrews, the Mendietas. Uh, the Ravenellis, they've all agreed. So so the game for those, I mean, Borough fans are well aware of what the game is because we've been talking about it for a couple of years. Maybe yeah, Sunderland fans yeah. and, and Newcastle fans don't. The whole idea is we're going to have this celebration game between the two most successful squads in Borough's history. Cue the snide comments from from Mags and Mackhams at that point. Um, so it's the it's it's the Brian Robson squad that went to three cup finals in 11 months from 98. And it's the Steve McLaren side that uh, won the first piece of... The last ever piece of uh, silverware, serious silverware to be lifted by a North East club. And, um, mm-hmm. and also got to the UEFA Cup final. So it's those two. Robbo's agreed to manage his team. Steve McLaren's agreed to manage his team. Um, so it is the oh, likes of Ravenelli, Janino, all that sort of stuff going head to head with the Duca, Hasselbank, Mendieta. So, you know, that that's what we're planning. Uh, and all the guys, uh, the guys have been fantastic. Um, you know, all of them say, yeah, just give us enough notice. Tell us where we need to yeah. be and we'll be there. So we're hoping to raise half a million quid for Teesside. That's what we're hoping. Um, I mean, we're we're going to turn it into a, a big weekend of a, a football celebration in the it's town. It's incredible. Yeah. Brilliant. It, it needs to have, you know, we've seen success, obviously, um, with the YouTube uh, sensations, the Sidemen, uh, obviously just having their charity match as well. They went played at London Stadium. Um, and they're obviously just, uh, for those that don't know who the Sidemen are, obviously a well-known YouTube group. Um, and they versed the YouTube All-Star. So they brought in all the biggest YouTube you know, faces and streamers and content creators, of you will, uh, to the London Stadium. And uh, we're, they do a, an annual charity match, you know, every 12 months. And, you know, obviously YouTube success and uh, big well-known, you know, uh, celebrities, if you will, uh, to, you know, the kids and, um, you know, the, the youngsters as well. But, you know, even the adults that, you know, can watch the, uh, that have grown up with the Simon uh, having to raise uh, 2.4 million quid wow. um, in that game, you yeah. know, and, and, and you know, and, in a packed out London stadium for a for a YouTube game, you know, where it was just play, it was literally just filled with people from who you know who create um, you know content on YouTube. So, um, yeah, you know, these brilliant. charity we, matches we are, the Pavel Cup. are a thing. The Pavel yeah. Cup. Yeah, we yeah. did the Pavel Cup as yeah. well because obviously Pavel, you know, God bless him, passed away, and um, you know, uh, after after the funeral, and you know, me, Steve Harper, and Steve Howie, and uh, a couple of his close friends travelled out, you know, to to his hometown for the funeral, and you know, we had a couple of days over there, you know, it was it was it was you know traumatic experience but we um you know we, we said our goodbyes to him we we did a memorial service in, in newcastle but then we thought well how can we you know how can we put something back in, in pavel's name and 
prior to COVID, we did we did three games, um, all at Dunstan Football Club, with um, you know just a, a host of Newcastle legends giving up their time mm. and, and playing a variety of teams over the course of the over the course of that three year period, and it was um, it was great. And yeah, we, we raised a couple of grand, you know, each game, and you know just doing something like yeah. that, you know, the community like it, the fans love it, um, it gives them an opportunity to get that little bit closer to the legends and, and see people that may not have yeah. you know seen and I, you know the Newcastle one against Manchester United at uh, Kingston Park Shira scored his last ever goal in football mm. as well yeah you know, see that he's, sort he's of never, stuff he's never yeah. played a game he's never played a game since so it will, it's worth yeah. the Henry money alone to go to those kind of things and of course you, completely you, agree. Know, you have the you have the other thing as well you have the, you can have a dinner as well where you get the players you know together and you know yeah. swapping anecdotes and telling stories with supporters it, it's a great thing to do and uh, you know any, I've seen lots of these Little, you know, little smaller games, you know, take place in the northeast as well, where people do Newcastle versus Sunderland or Borough versus Sunderland, Borough versus Newcastle kind of games. They're all, they're all great. You should support them, people, because um, you know they need that. Now, I, I just want to say, yeah, I was wrong with the uh, the Dennis Law thing. I've just been doing me me, me work here whilst uh, speaking to you guys, and yeah, Law wasn't at Man City then, but it was, there was that infamous. There is a rumor that he sent them down, but they're, they're, they're saying that it was mm. a myth. He didn't actually send them. Down, well, wasn't so it? Oh, wasn't okay. it Law and Best? Who who were roommates, even though they played for the opposite the, the opposite colours of the um, of the city, they were roommates, and it was at the time when George Best received a death threat from the IRA, and there was a uh, and there was a, you know basically a, uh, a note appeared at the football club saying he was going to be shot during the game, and um, and they were team and they were and they were roommates. They they lived in the same place together, and uh, the game went ahead. City United and. Just before kickoff, they were doing the warm ups and just before kickoff, because Best and Law weren't too far away from each other on the lineup for kickoff. So George Best walked up to Dennis Law to shake his hand before the game. And Law pushed him in the chest and pushed him away and says, Get away, he might be a bad shot. <laughs> 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 Incredible! I, yeah. I mean, these, these are all these are all the football tales that come out. I mean, particularly if you go and listen to some of these guys speak, they're, yeah. brilliant. they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, but a question, yeah. actually, from that charity game, a question for Ryan, a question for Borough fans, uh, and the WhatsApp number is oh three three oh oh four three two thousand and two. Here is your Borough teaser for the day. Maybe we're starting something Ooh. here. Maybe we we should have Ooh. three teasers every morning. Borough fans, 0330 043 2002. That's the WhatsApp number through to the studio, the North East Footy Breakfast this morning. The question is in that charity game that we're hoping to bring to the Riverside this coming summer, there are three players that qualify for playing for both squads. Who are they? Oh. Oh. Robbo's 97 98 team and McLaren's, what year was that? I've even forgotten what year was it. Was it 2004 2005 team? Dude. So Great. three yeah. players. Qualify for playing both scores. We're gonna to have to swap shirts at half time or something. Who are they? There you go. <laughs> wow, that's a good question. Yeah. I'll, uh, I, I, know, I think I know one, but I won't ruin it. I'll, no, uh, you can get in on the throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. <laughs> Ooh, honestly, I'm, I don't, I'm not confident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you were going to WhatsApp me privately, were you? Because you weren't confident. Ah, oh, I was going to get. I was going to get my mate, but. I mean, no, I think the one that springs to my mind, but I just don't know the area is, is Lee Catamore. I know he did both, but I don't know if he was Steve McLaren era for Borough. I don't nope. know if I've if nope. that's Man, too late or too early. You will kick yourself over one of them. You will if you don't get really. It, you will kick yourself as hard as oh, it's no. physically phys physically possible to kick yourself. Oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna have to have a big think here. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, mate. Wow. Well, well, okay. Well, 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 there you go. Put you right on what, the spot. Sorry oh. about that. Sorry about See, that. See, I, th I thought it was. I thought it was Lee. I, yeah, I would have no. put it on Lee. But um, we've mentioned two of them already this morning. Yeah, I was gonna. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll leave you in okay. suspenders, mate. I'll leave you in suspenders. Okay, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I have a thing. I have a thing. Ryan suspenders. Oh my god, what a what a picture you were painting on the morning. You got me. You got me all muddled up now. I'm just having a thing. I'm deep in thought. Oh, but, sorry, uh, mate. Sorry, yeah, I'll that's, put a, you good on that's a good one. That's a good one. Googling, no, but trying not to yeah, hear you Googling, tapping the yeah, tapping yeah. the computer. You see, that's what he's doing. He's using silent I'm getting the keys. secretary. Yes. Yeah, the secretary. Get that answer for me right now across the desk. Uh, and it's uh, there's a there's a birthday today, guys, as well. It's all happy. Right. 
25th birthday to Sky Sports News. Oh, Sky Sports. Wow. 1998, today. 1998, I was there. There you go. I set up the Northeast Bureau. There we go. It was, so, uh, uh, a new- oh, it was Borough legend Neil Madison. Uh, his birthday yesterday. Had a chat to Maddo and uh, sent him all the love. So yeah, Maddo's birthday oh, yesterday birthday, as well. Maddo. So happy another birthday, speaking Sky of Sports news. what's what's the biggest what's the biggest breaking news story that you've seen on Sky Sports and lads? For me, um, you know, I've, I've got a, I've got a, the, the one that sticks out in my memory. Who was that player who drove to a football club? And on transfer deadline day, <laughs> only to find that he wasn't getting signed. Who was that? Oh, I know the story, but I can't remember who the player was. <laughs> he drove all the way to the club thinking the deal was done, and it wasn't. It wasn't a drive back, hall, to was it? It was before he that. Had to, he had to drive back to his old club. That was an absolute classic. Yeah. That's what. That's one I have of those a feeling things. Jordan Rose did that for for Middlesbrough during the Karanka era, Dave. Well, it wasn't do you remember him. that? Wait, yeah. I know it wasn't him, but do you remember Jordan Rhodes? I remember there was a big, there was speculation was that Jordan Rose was going to sign did about a week earlier before deadline day. But he came up to the borough, yeah, and they, they were like, "Nah." <laughs> and then a week later, he came back, and they, they were tried. like, "Okay, yeah." I thought they tried, but it was too late. Ah, uh, okay. So was then, that then they had to wait for the next window opening. I remember, votes. I remember him. Yeah, I remember him driving up and and not getting signed. So mm. yeah, it no, was there Odom, we go. Odom Wengi. Odom Wengi. That's right. Ah. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. thought he'd gone to QPR go. in 2013. He drove to Loftus Road and the deal was <laughs> off. Wow. Peter Odom Wengi. Yeah, that's him. I remember Poor it. Bloke. I remember it. <laughs> but thanks very much, Steve. I'd really like to, to thank you from the heart of my bottom this morning uh, for oh. reminding me how old I am. Well, oh, that's all right. <laughs> no problem at all. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, it was interesting big... times, though. When, when we, we set up Sky Sports News in 98, and um, obviously Sky wow. wasn't... You know, Sky Sports News was brand new. Um, it wasn't considered part of the Sky Sports family to any huge extent. And the battles I used to have as as the first Northeast reporter on Sky were, were incredible because, you know, you didn't get the access that the guys get now. You didn't have the relationships that the guys have now. It was It was a pretty tough ask, you know, to try and create something brand new, dealing with the three major football clubs in the region. Uh, Darlington and Hartlepool were fairly easy because they wanted they wanted the publicity they wanted you know to give the access to to get the airtime but with Borough Sunderland and Newcastle uh, there were some right right royal battles Keith Lamb the former chief executive at Middlesbrough you know you know one day I, I could see they were they were giving access to the the time teasers and BBCs and Sky was didn't get it and I complained to him and he just said to me write to me if you've got a complaint you know it was it 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 it, it wasn't a fertile uh, reporting journalistic um, plane that we were operating on at the time because we were brand new. We were absolutely yeah. brand new. You know, and our argument was we're part of Sky Sports. They've got the Premier League deals. You know, clubs are getting a lot of money out of Sky. We are part of Sky. But it, it was considered like a, uh, almost like a separate entity at the time. But now it's it's been fully embraced and it's good to see. I think That's I think great. the biggest story for me, and of course the anniversaries this week, was the seventh of October, twenty twenty one, which was the takeover of Newcastle United mm. uh, by the wow. Public Investment Fund. Um, Saudi money arrived on Ooh, Tyneside. Yeah, so, mentioned it. You mentioned it, and that that was. And, and I was up <laughs> at the ground. I was up at the ground, and I had a feeling it was going to go through that day. Obviously, I'd, I played my part in the background with uh, with things, and I went up and I did I did an interview with Sky Sports that day, and um, then I went home and just watched it all unfold on TV. I didn't stay at the ground. It mm. was uh, it was fantastic to watch, but um, that that's probably the biggest Newcastle United related story I for got- me. Is, is the one that stands out for you, Dave? For I, I got, I got, I remember two: Kevin Keegan leaving Newcastle, and also yep. Peter Reid getting the sack from Sunderland. They're the two. They're the yeah. two. Yeah. Because I got, I got sent to press the button at Kevin Keegan's uh, gates, entrance gates, and he uh, he picked me up on that about three or four months later when he did something with horse racing, and we were at the same event, and he. You know, he just said in the room, "Nice to see some uh, some faces who were turning out at my door when I got, you know, when I when I left Newcastle." Um, so, so he he got the last laugh on that one. Um, Peter Reid leaving Sunderland was a big story because this came after you know the Premier League, uh, Kevin Phillips thirty yep. goals in the Premier League season, Golden Boot winner, um, all that sort of stuff. So I remember that. Um, what do I remember from the Borough and Sky? Uh, I remember d- Steve McLaren. I remember when when he got announced for England. I remember waking up because I used to check Sky Sports. And back then, we um, when obviously that was happening, um, there wasn't much coverage of football here in Australia. 
and if you wanted it, it was there was a show on at midnight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you you had to stay up and watch Mark Bosnich, um, obviously Man United uh, keeper, but obviously an Aussie keeper as well. He used to have a show on at midnight um, with Robbie Slater, and that was like once a week. And they he got midnight coverage, so you had to stay up till midnight to watch it. And that's the only Premier League sort of football you will show you would get there. But I remember I used to get on my um, get on the old computer, old, on my, my dad's old computer, and uh, yeah, type up uh, Sky Sports. And I remember, yeah, reading that Steve McLaren was taking the England job. Yeah, and uh, it was off to was leaving Borough, and um, yeah, Middlesbrough were without a manager. And I was, yeah, that was I remember waking up and reading that as a as a young lad. But in in recent times, for me, I think um, probably the Tiger Woods. Um, I remember, I remember reading all about Tiger Woods getting that fifth green jacket at the yeah. Masters. Yeah, um, and what a moment that was! So, Here's what, um, and that was covered by Sky Sports as well. Here's a memory for you, uh, Steve. I nearly got filled in one day on my Sky job by Duncan Ferguson. <laughs> oh wow, Ooh. Duncan, big, him. big Dunk came after me, and um, really? yeah, thanks to the lads for pulling him back. Uh, we can we can we can actually dig into that if you want a little bit later. I mean, I'm happy to happy to talk the story. I mean, it's done and dusted now. Um, but it was a frightening moment. Put it that way. It was a frightening wow. moment. But anyway, look, lots more on the North East Footy Breakfast to come. If you want to be part of it, 0330 043 2002 is our WhatsApp number. Get your comments through to the studio uh, for the boys to chew the cud on. We're going to talk more footy across the North East on the Cat, the Red and the Toon after this. Have you fancied presenting your own radio show? Well, you could well be presenting this very programme. How do you fancy joining a growing list of fantastic radio presenters? I don't want to hear after four or five games in the manager ever saying we need to restart and reboot. It is early days. <laughs> the cup run. The don't let me. Run. It is. Don't let me. <laughs> the cat is all about Wearside. And at times, the Black Cats too. The tune is all about Tyneside. And at times, Newcastle United too. The red is all about Teesside. And at times, the Borough. Too. So come on, if you're confident you could present this very show, reach out, get in touch. Email any of the three stations, that's hello at the tuneuk.com, hello at the catuk.com, or hello at the reduk.com. Clark. My debut 1990 September, Bristol City away to get that opportunity, what thousands of Geordies only dream of. Hignett. Playing against Chelsea and, and to score the first goal there is something that still lives with me now and it's what most people will talk to me about. Williams. I first goal for Sunderland away at Leicester. It was a left foot volley. I didn't realise my left foot was for kicking a ball with it as well. I thought it was just for standard. Across the North East, it's the three legends. Fridays at 6 on the Cats, the Reds and the Two. Hey! Steve and Rye, the North East Footy Breakfast. The Cats, the Two and the Red. Tell you what's funny, lads. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're 15 minutes late for the adverts and we're already three quarters of the way through the first hour of the show and we haven't even talked about anything on that script you've prepared. <laughs> Nothing. Classic. Absolute classic. So I've just we, uh, been handed a package as well, lads, from Middlesbrough. Oh, I've just in. had international... International mail arrives from oh, the club, so I have to. Uh, from Middlesbrough Football Club. It might be, yeah, from oh, Middlesbrough Football Club. I was getting club. excited. I thought, it, it. I thought it was the one we were sending you. Have you got that yet? No, no, no I haven't gotten that one yet. Oh, um, but on. Middlesbrough Football Club's just arrived, so uh, yeah, I'm opening that anxiously. But we haven't even done headlines. Look at That's us waffling. Great stuff, right? Get this package we, out we, on we the show. The, the, the rains are, <laughs> are going to go through the roof. <laughs> Oh, just where we, oh, just, just, just where we start just turning the cameras on. Yeah, 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 it yeah. smells yeah. of the tea side, lads. This is the closest I am to you, lads, right now. Yeah, go on then, mate. Smoke. Get your package out. Go on, on there. Live on there. Go on. Yeah. You hear it? He's like a kid at Christmas and oh, he's just tearing it's it. It's three shirts. It's you know what it is shirts. yet? It's three, it's three shirts, right? So it's got, I've got a Riley McGree, uh, I've got a Sammy Severa home shirt. I've got a Riley McGree away shirt. And I got a goalkeeper kit, all Don't signed by the lads. Yeah. Did all you ask, signed. Is it just a gift? All signed. Uh, yeah. Ah, wow. sun's shining out of your posterior, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. So Sammy Silvera home shirt, signed by Sammy Silvera. Can't believe that. Got a Tom Glover goalkeeper shirt here with, the, with his name and number on the back. And he signed that as well. Wow. And then Riley McGree, away kit, signed by the GOAT himself on the number eight. I can't believe it! Uh, we're well, claiming we're claiming full responsibility. My wife in the for background. That. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. That's incredible. Wow. Is she going to say? Is she going to say hello? Received the three Aussies. Is she going to say hello? Huh? 
Uh, I don't think so. She's gone shy now and walked off. <laughs> All right, okay. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, there we go. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, pat ourselves, we'll pat ourselves on the back and claim full responsibility for it, Ryan. Don't you worry. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with being a mad Borough fan at all. <laughs> yeah. I apologise to take the show. we got headlines, boys. we got headlines. Who's going first? Go on, Ray. All right, so down in Middlesbrough, lads, we got the Middlesbrough New Headlines. Good morning, Borough fans. Hope you're fantastic, safe and well. On this Tuesday morning, we've got football tonight. Do we, Borough fans, as Middlesbrough entertain Cardiff at the Riverside? Having claimed their first championship away win of the season at the weekend when they beat Watford at Vicarage Road, Middlesbrough now return uh, and they host Cardiff City. Borough, however, do not have a great home record against Cardiff, having lost three of their last five home matches against the Bluebirds. Changing. Last season's game saw Borough suffer a 3-2 defeat against, uh, sorry, under former boss Chris Wilder, uh, with Cardiff scoring three first half goals before the Teesiders staged something of a second half revival, scoring through the ex-players Duncan Watmore and Rodrigo Muniz. Now, Middlesbrough will anxiously await scan results uh, likely to come in during today's, uh, before today's, tonight's match, sorry, uh, with Lewis O'Brien's ankle suffered, injury suffered uh, at Watford on the weekend. Michael Carrick still fearing the worst over the injury. The Nottingham Forest loanee O'Brien was forced off in the first half of Borough's win at Vicarage Road uh, with Carrick admittedly, admitting immediately after it didn't look good. And while there was still no de- definitive update uh, during Michael Carrick's press conference yesterday, Michael said that he wasn't upbeat about O'Brien's prospects for being back anytime soon. Uh, Michael said during that press conference, we're still awaiting scan results at the moment, although it's not looking too promising. At this stage, I can't really give anything specific, although it won't be too long because we're waiting on results to come in tomorrow, which is obviously today for you Borough fans. So nervous, nervously waiting there, and I know all Borough fans will be uh, sweating on that one because Lewis has had an excellent start to his Middlesbrough career. And Michael Carrick doesn't want to add too much pressure on young Joshy Coburn, but he, like everyone at Middlesbrough, is excited by the young striker's prospects. Having burst onto the scene a little over two years ago after being, his, being handed his borough debut by Neil Warnock, just aged 18, Coburn has continued to grow from strength to strength. Now 20, he has returned to the club this summer after a successful loan spell at Bristol Rovers and is showing the benefits of that move. Coburn seems to be the answer for Borough's search for a striker and is seemingly now Borough don't have to, haven't had to look very far as the well-known Borough Academy provides the club once again. Middlesbrough again hosting Cardiff tonight in what will be a tough match with Carter four wins on the bounce and Middlesbrough now two in the champ in sorry in the in the championship. So tough game, but the first one under lights back at the Riverside in a packed out Riverside Stadium. Uh, it's going to be a great match. And the most important story of the day is it's in your hands, mate. It's in your hands. I've received three the three Aussie lads. Uh, I've gotten the all three Aussie lads sent by the club. I uh, can't believe it. I'm actually in shock just looking at him now. I'm smelling Riley McGree's shirt because uh, he's actually touched it. Um, but yeah, they've sent me the three Aussie lads, two of them, which I was the one that announced signing for the club in the summer, which was an incredible opportunity for me. I announced the signing of Sammy Silvera and Tom Glover to Middlesbrough. Um, but yeah, I've got Tom Glover's goalkeeper shirt, Riley McGree's away shirt, and Sammy Silvera's home shirt all signed by the three Aussie legends. So and, uh, I'm in shock. I can't believe it. Yeah, so so that's uh, that's Rai touching the three Aussie Borough legends. Uh, what are you touching, Steve? <laughs> well, I'm not touching cloth after yesterday's curry, uh, which uh, is good news. Uh, but Newcastle United headlines, Killian Mbappe has been named in the PSG squad to face Newcastle United in the Champions League tomorrow night at St James's Park. The mercurial forward has recovered from a recent injury setback, but he is getting a bit of stick from the French press, which I picked up on this morning. Efficient, messy, spectacular and frustrating is how they have described his start to the season. Uh, And it covers several realities, they say. Wow, Uh, his case raises questions. So is this a bit of kidology on behalf of the the French newspaper? Who knows? Uh, Newcastle United will also host one of the world's best referees on Wednesday evening. Uh, Referee Istvan Kovac from Romania will take charge of the match against PSG. Probably best known for his performance in uh, the Man City Real Madrid game in the Champions League. So uh, uh, high praise indeed. Uh, And don't forget, uh, admission details have now been released for Newcastle United's European under-19 youth league tie against PSG on Wednesday. Uh, ticket prices have been confirmed at £5 and £2. The tie is a 3 o'clock kick-off at Gateshead International Stadium. Tickets are directly on sale from Gateshead themselves. 
It's an advanced purchase online only. Uh, there's no admission on the day, no cash turnstiles at all. And the attendance is limited to 1,500. Uh, and UFC memberships and season tickets are not valid. The main stand is the only one that's going to be open. Seating is unreserved and the gates open at 2 o'clock. And uh, if you get a chance, I have retweeted it on my Twitter, at Steve Wraith. Uh, the uh, Newcastle fans last night who went to watch the drones, uh, some amazing photographs, but uh, none more so than uh, Adam Pearson, uh, who uh, got a wonderful shot of a car park um, which isn't too far from the ground. <laughs> Newcastle fans <laughs> piling on top of this car park, cars going round as if it was a match day, just to get a sight of these drones, this drone display. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, fever pitch almost reached at Newcastle. It certainly will be tomorrow night, but that is the headlines uh, from me today. Okay. I've got to do this one because Ted hasn't joined us yet. He'll be with us on Friday. So I, I'm just, you know, putting sanitizer on my hands and everything um, okay it's on the news Jermaine Defoe's waded into the deplorable mocking of Bradley Lowry uh, by Sheffield Wednesday fan the former Sunderland striker slammed 31 year old Dave Houghton who used Lowry's photo during last weekend's Hillsborough clash Defoe became a close friend of the young Sunderland fan during his battle with cancer Houghton has admitted, dis- uh, has admitted causing harassment alarm and distress at a court hearing on Monday he's been told his actions were utterly deplorable by the district judge James Gould, who also warned that sentence options could include jail. Sentences will take place on November the 17th, uh, and the uh, the individual's been released on bail. I hope they lock the cell up and throw the key away. Uh, voting's open for the fans to pick their player of the month for September. Jack Clark is the first nominee after netting six goals in five games, including two stunning braces against Blackburn Rovers and Sheffield Wednesday. Also in the running, I said back Dan Ballard after clean sheets against Southampton and the Owls, and him grabbing his first goal for the club at QPR and then Sheffield Wednesday Abdullah Bars also in there netting his first goal of the season at Loftus Road with Dan Neal making up the shortlist fans can vote using the club's Twitter account which is now known as X I hate that formerly known as Twitter we're going to keep mm, it as Twitter me too yeah, yeah, rubbish yeah, yeah. me too and Sunderland's women yeah. made 11 points from 5 games with a 2-1 victory over Watford women at Eppleton it's now 5 games unbeaten for the lasses Natasha Fenton and Mary McAteer grabbed the goals that is the Sunderland news ok fellas there you go where are we at next if before we move on from that, I wanted to get your lads' thoughts on that, actually. And uh, it's it's one that's obviously, you know, a very controversial at the moment. But that Sheffield Wednesday fan, obviously, yeah. uh, showing the image Trash. of Bradley Lowry. Um, I, I, for one, obviously want the book thrown at them. But I wanted to ask you lads in, and, and your thoughts on it. If if jail time uh, for the, I think it's two brothers uh, that have been uh, found guilty now and obviously faced the magistrate with one uh, of the brothers uh, being the one that actually held the phone up. Um, with the prospect of facing jail time, is that um, is that a fair outcome? Do you think to for for the lad to to face jail time? I didn't like what he said in court, which he said he was using it um, in or in good banter, because yeah. you know there's a human story uh, and there's a family behind that. Uh, yeah. So how the hell can that be? Can that be good banter? Um, yeah. You know. I, He's been named and shamed. Um, I don't know whether his employer is going to take any action against him. Um, you know, is there a question of him losing his job or not? If I was an employer of somebody uh, on on my team, hang on, Steve's back. If there was somebody on my team who who did that and was representing my company by working for me, I'd want him out the door. Uh, but jail Agreed. time, I don't know. Maybe jail time for what he did seems excessive i don't think it'll go there mm. uh i think he'll it's a public order offense i think he'll face some sort of uh, financial penalty plus maybe yeah. there's some community time that has to be served um jail time i think is 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 look i'm all for short sharp shock treatments you know i am the one yeah. who thinks we're too soft this this day and age on particularly uh, young louts who go around causing absolute mayhem, antisocial behaviour and whatever else uh, on, on the like general the public. But no. I think jail time for that maybe is one step too far. But, you know, hang him out to dry, name and shame him, which has been done. He might lose his job, he yeah. should do, if his employer's got an ounce of uh, an ounce of, uh, of, of moral behind He's lost his, his job. Decision. Has he lost his job, quite rightly. Yeah, good. he's lost his. Okay, um, good. Yeah. But, yeah, but my view is jail time, I think, is one step too far. 
Yeah, I yeah. agree. I yeah. mean, it's it's horrendous what he did. Um, he's learning his lesson the hard way. You know, you've you seen the shame on his mother's face or his sister's face, whoever yeah. it was, who accompanied him to court yesterday. And it's um, you know that you know the paparazzi, you know, flashing away yesterday. I mean, whatever he gets, it's going to be severe. Um, going to jail, is he going to benefit him from that? No, but you know, at the at the same time, um, you know, he's learned a valuable lesson, uh, and uh, it's one that's been a costly one. But uh, yeah, dis- disgraceful. It, it really is, and. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, they, they should throw the proverbial book at them uh, within reason. Yeah. That's, yeah. That would be, that, yeah, that's the right thing. It was an interesting just to see, yeah, that, that it could be jail time for me. Um, and I think, look, it's deplorable. Obviously, they're going to be banned for Sheffield uh, Wednesday now. They won't be seeing football ever again. They definitely won't be stepping inside any stadium. Obviously, they'll be too well known now. So there's no more football for them, you know, pretty much in their lives, I would argue. It's a lifetime ban, uh, and I don't think it should be anything less. Um, and I think it's deplorable. We've seen, um, obviously, you know, they're, they're too, obviously, I think they're, you know, in their 30s as well, you know, but they're obviously not, uh, you know, family men or anything like that. So I haven't had kids of their own. As someone with kids of my own, I can't imagine. Yeah. I wish that pain on anyone else. Do you know what I mean? So um, I just don't, yeah, I just thought jail time. And I, look, I, I think, you know, that, that, that we need to throw the book at them, but I just thought jail time was, a was. Uh, I'm not sure what we would have gotten out of that or what they would have gotten out of that. Um, but look, you know, whatever he, happens, happens when and, you you know and, do the crime, and, do the time. Is he gonna get? Is he gonna get employed elsewhere? You know, is who's gonna want to take yeah, him I'll on? Be, who wants? Who wants that part, part, will, you, part of the company? You, he will at some point. He will at some point. But I mean, you know, all of these crimes and, and, and these kind of things have to be looked at in in, in isolation. I mean, you know, the, there's yeah. comedians who make a living out of um, you know making crude and, and crass jokes about yeah. situations that happen worldwide. You know, I mean, you know, back in the seventies, yeah. it was acceptable to you know to to take the mic out of someone's you know accent, someone's race, you know, someone's colour, someone's creed. Um, you know, that that's now we've moved on from that. That society would don't do that anymore um there is it, it's that fine balance you know between you know between walk and being you know be, being funny and, no, don't and, get don't get me onto know. the issue of walk mate please but that's that's mm. where you're at that's where you're at and but something like that something as public as that mocking the death of yeah. a young six-year-old guy yeah, a young disgusting. six-year-old boy who died of cancer it's unacceptable yeah. and um yeah right and so, s- he's been tried he's, 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 his reputation has been you know it, it's been shredded and you know yeah. there, there needs to be punishment let's see what let's see what it is you know there's the precedent set once this punishment is is leveled though certainly yeah yeah one act of stupidity you know in, the, in this day and age and your, your face is plastered everywhere isn't it and that's you know the one thing with social media we talk about it with the players and <laughs> all that sort of stuff but you know, everything just goes around. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got a voice now, so everyone can speak up and, you know, out them. We're seeing, obviously, Middlesbrough uh, putting a statement out yesterday, obviously, with the disgusting racial uh, abuse that Yusuf copped yeah. um, on the weekend. Have they caught so, anybody for that? Um, now, no, but they're working with police now. So they put a statement out and they're working with police and uh, Yusuf has just been, you know, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i good friends with Yusuf. We did a chat the other week on, on my YouTube channel and... Um, yeah, I mean, in constant cahoots with with Yusuf and talking to him, yeah, uh, almost hourly, and um, the amount of love and sh- and support he's been shown, um, businesses that have stepped in to support him as well, just shows that uh, you know, and and everyone as well, likely with the the Bradley Lowry as well. Do you know what I mean? It's you know, everyone that's come to the defence of of what you know uh, of the clubs and well, not in the clubs, I apologise, but um, more more so, what, you know, how deplorable it is. Do you know what I mean? How many yeah. fans have jumped on and said it's not okay? shows that uh, you know we are, as a society we are you know greatly greatly maturing but it's you know there's still just that one percent that just it's just a minority seemingly... lads it's it just a so minority it, and, and yeah. you know let's not them, let the minority not spoil it for the majority that's what i say you know completely the mindless the mindless people. minority um because yeah. Yeah. you know you've got minorities in 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 many walks of life but this is this is just absolutely a mindless minority and just um when i woke up this morning it was great to see steve there was a newcastle fan who'd posted on one of the the the, the northeast football banter pages uh, the Newcastle crest with a picture of Bradley in the middle of it so you know it's good to see even yeah, uh, even those those real hard rivalries like in Newcastle Sunderland like a Celtic <laughs> Rangers etc um, you know even even that you know the the human side of of, of, of how we live um, you know tops that and it was good to see and just on the the Yusuf side Rai um, the the red on T side the, the radio station for T side 
um, received a call yesterday, and um, yeah. there is a there is a local company who want to get in touch, and we, we we're putting them Love in it. touch with with Yusuf, who yeah. want to invite him into a, the corporate box for for you know one of the next borough games. So yeah, 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 absolutely right. Um, you know the way the way the football fans can rally round as a football family. Well, that's the thing, as yeah. opposed to big rivals and point scoring, like on this program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't stand for it as, and we all come to you know the, to the defence of uh, you know the minority when you know, when it does happen. But you know, plenty, of, and that's the thing. We can get back to focusing on football, focusing on the loving our clubs, and you know, and working together as fans uh, to support our club the best way we can. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we're late for the news. We are late for the news. So plenty more to come. Another hour of this nonsense uh, across the northeast. It's called the Northeast Footy Brecky Show. If you want to be part of it, you can. You can WhatsApp your your, your questions, your points through to the boys. Oh three three oh oh four three two thousand and two. That's oh three three oh oh four three two thousand and two. And we're still asking that borough question this morning. So, Brian Robson's 97-98 squad, Steve McLaren's 2004-2005 squad, you know, three cup finals in 11 months, uh, UEFA Cup final and the League Cup win. Uh, which three players played for both squads? Uh, it's a borough question. Apologies, Sunderland and Newcastle. News is next. Now then, do you do sales? Do you fancy a great career challenge? Well, the Red, the Cat and the Toon has a full-time vacancy for a special sales exec. Not only will you be responsible for generating the vital revenue needed to see the Northeast's newest radio business grow, but you'll grow too. Show us you can do the business and you'll soon become Group Sales Director. Our stations are flying. We have the three legends back on air. Then there's the one that most are talking about, the Northeast Footy Brecky show and there's more to come gumption and creativity count more to us than years you may only have two or three years selling experience but if you get what we're trying to achieve you will be the right fit you'll ideally be located in Tyneside or Wearside this will be a hybrid working role it's a full-time basic plus commission position so come on think you have what it takes then give us a shout email any of the three stations that's hello at the tune UK Com, hello at the cat uk.com or hello at the red uk.com from yarm to yibbe harrington to horsley hill swarwell to silverlink steve and rye the northeast footy breakfast right across the northeast the red the tune and the cat Oh well, when we play a bit of tune, we uh, we play a good one. Sing, simple mind, sanctify yourself on the yeah. northeast footy breakfast. We had a couple of messages in, fella. Uh, Alan Shimo says uh, regarding young Bradley, uh, lock the guy up, throw the key away. Uh, Sarah in Yarm, yep. inexcusable. How can mocking an ill six-year-old be classed as good? humoured banter. Yep. And by the way, she uh, then added Janino and Mark Schwarzer. Ah, the big shorts. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, yes, that is two out of the three uh, of well the Borough done. players. There's one other Borough Very player, well not as well known, uh, outside of, uh, I suppose, Riverside supporting circles, uh, but there is one other player that would qualify for playing in both of those uh, charity squads that are coming to the Riverside. Um, and on the subject of, uh, of young Bradley, which we were discussing just before mm. the news, uh, I noticed on one of the uh, the Sunderland fan groups this morning, a Liverpool fan uh, was was uh, joined, was uh, subscribed, and was was given access. And the Liverpools put an amazing poem uh, on this fan group Facebook page, uh, all about young Bradley. The guy's a uh, big Liverpool fan, but he's also a poet, so he's written a poem, especially for uh, especially for young Bradley. So it gives you an idea of um, the moral compass that is out there for the majority of football fans, lads. Yeah, yeah, of course disgusting. it does. Of course yeah. it does. Well done, well done. You know, the, the, the football community never, ever, ever surprises me. They always get behind no. good causes. They always know uh, right from wrong, and they always go that extra mile uh, to, to to show that it is a minority who spoil you know spoil things for people. So um, yeah, well done, everybody. No surprise though, and especially the northeast who you know we are the most generous uh, you know part of the, the the country. I've always said that, and especially a, nor- a northeast of England, which is constantly, constantly. Um, you know, ignored 
by you know the you know the, the government and and those down south we, we we have to fight hard to get what we want but ultimately from our perspective um you know we always give and we give generously so, we tend so to well look done after well done everybody we tend to look after we do well done i just uh, i just want to move on to uh, champions league lads uh, mm-hmm. because it is creeping up and i know we've got <laughs> we know we've got Burra's big game tonight uh, but i love this frank leboeuf uh, French legend. Mm. Uh, he's used the, he's used this uh, this this terminology talking about the game tomorrow. He said um, the tune are the most effective when they play like old fashioned English sides, pressing high, fighting for every war uh, every ball. And he has warned PSG they'll get smashed if they aren't focused. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tomorrow we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some uh, some absolute classics tomorrow. It's, it's a big game, massive game. But uh, I, I want to move on to the um, one of the topics. Frank took, Frank's uh, a mate. Do you, me, do you want me to try and get him on the show? He's actually an ex ESPN yeah, colleague on. of mine. Get him on. We'll get we'll get the get beef on then. We'll get the beef on. Yeah. An hour and twelve minutes in, we're finally going to get to a point uh, a point of interest on the list that I uh, compiled for today's show. Um, why do football fans uh, need a scapegoat? Why do we always a good question. have to pick up a player and criticise him and make him the one player? Uh, that we don't want to be playing in the team who we think every every mistake is down to him and I'll tell you who we've got at the moment at Newcastle Dan Byrne he is the latest Newcastle United player to cop the flack from our fans um, he's he's not a left back he's too slow he's going to get he's going to get absolutely mullered by um, the PSG tomorrow he's got to be dropped we've got to bring in this player we've got to bring in that player so it, it's Dan Byrne Prior to Dan Byrne, um, Bruno. Bruno's not himself. He needs to be dropped. We need to put Tenali in. Prior to that, Sean Longstaff shouldn't be anywhere near the team. The list is endless. And, 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 and every time this happens, it, it, it's social media. It's a social media issue, I think. But every time it happens, a player gets, you know, gets vilified. And I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. Dan Byrne made one slip at the weekend against Burnley. He got back, he rectified his mistake, he got the ball back, and that was it. I don't think Dan Byrne had a bad game at the weekend. I did the fans forum on NUFC Matters last night. One of one of the lads, and it's all about opinions, said exactly what I'm saying. Dan Byrne isn't, isn't good enough to play a left back. He needs to be dropped. We should be bringing somebody else in. People even talking about unbalancing the team. Move Trippier across to the left, play Livramento right right hand side why would you do that when you've got one of the best European teams coming to St James's Park why would you take your best right back out of position put him in left back where he's only played for England really and put Livramento in on the right hand side um, you know who has only played you know one full game for Newcastle United it doesn't make sense mm. and, and uh, is this is this something that's happening a, a Borough at the moment is there a Borough player who's getting all the stick yeah, I'd say so. In, in Matty Crooks, I reckon, Dave. I reckon Matty mm. Crooks cops a fair bit of slack. He's always been, uh, always seems to be at the the, the center of the borough fans' attention in, in being too slow and um, and and not the you know the center, you know the cam that we needed. Obviously, he's got the boots to fill in, in Chubarakpom. But um, I think on the weekend he played one of the best games I've ever seen him play. And um, it, it, it's it's you know, and we see, but we see it all across the country, don't we, Steve? We see you know, have you said like Harry Maguire? At Man United, um, there always seems to be the one player that stands out, and you know, look, it can be one or two bad performances. It can be, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's, and I think it's up to then uh, the manager, obviously. And I think we've seen Carrick do it a little bit well uh, down at Borough as well, because uh, we've seen Sammy Severo. Obviously, he's struggled to uh, adapt to uh, the Championship game. His, um, you know, his performances have been great, but you know, he's uh, had a few woeful shots and stuff like that, and. He was starting to cop a very bit of slack from the fans. In fact, where my DMs were starting to fill up, uh, getting blamed for signing him as if I was the one that signed <laughs> him. But um, the the it was and you know, it was sad to see. Obviously, you know, I love Sammy and I think he's going to be a great player for, for Middlesbrough. But these young lads that have come in um, have you know uh, have failed to sort of I guess you know take this, the world by storm. But I think they're going to just need time, and I think the fans. Um, you know, are, are quick to jump on, you know, footballers that, you know, just have a bad couple of games. And obviously when the team's losing as well, it's quite easy to pile in on one or two players. And um, I think it's then up to the manager then to, to protect the players. And I think Michael Carrick, you know, credit to him, has done that. He's taken Sammy off the pitch. He's, he's got Sammy on the bench, same as 
uh, Rogers and, and a few of these other boys that have been copping a fair bit of stick to the start of the season and a turn of results as well. Um, and, you know, the fans are, you know, loving the team again. And I think now, you know, it's 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 been uh, very, very well handled by character to sort of protect his, his players. But it's a, it's, a, it's a great question because there is there always does seem to be one player that sticks out. Uh, and it can be one silly thing that, you know, uh, that a player does, you know, makes one mistake, you know, human error, if you will. Um, as we see, you know, I don't want to bring it up again, but the VAR, human error, do I say it? Um, and, um, you know, and we seem to sort of just pile in on, on, on that one player. And even though they're one of our own or one of the, um, you know, the, the clubs, you know, it could be a club legend sort of thing. Um, one mistake seems to, uh, yeah, to undo all that. So um, it's a shame really, but um, I think it's just part of football, isn't it? You just sort of, you know, you love your team through thick and thin and, um, you know, fans have the right, you know, to... I guess you know be the, uh, the biggest, the harshest critics. I guess in the world, in in, in their footballing teams. So I've got they seem a, to pick out um, from every sort of uh, every weakness from every player. I've got to laugh yeah. at how you're getting flack. You know, as though it was your fault. <laughs> that's, that's it's unreal. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. that was funny when yeah. Sammy yeah he had a couple of bad games. Uh, and look, I, I think Sammy's going to be. I said it, and I kept, and I'll keep saying, and I said it in most of the DMs. Some were a bit too vulgar to reply to, but. Um, uh, so I said it in most games. I love Sammy. Sammy's, you know, come from the A League, and I've said this on plenty of occasions. And I'll, you know, go on, you know, hand on heart. The A League, uh, which is the football league here in Australia, is probably on par with League One football. That's where it's at. I would, I would say, if you were to put the A League teams into, if they was to merge for whatever reason into England, you would put all the A League teams into League One. I think that's where about say it sits in in, in a football league dynamic. So you're taking Sammy Silvera from Australia, the other side of the world in a League One style uh, football uh, and expecting him to then, you know, you know, jump into Middlesbrough and set the world alight. And I think, you know, we saw the flair and, and the fire that he can create. Yes, he missed a couple of, you know, shots, but, you know, he's still young and he's moved from the other side of the world. And I think he's going to be a right sensation for Middlesbrough. He just needs time to, you know, to bed in. But yep. then, you know, he misses a couple of those easy shots and all the, you know, the fans just jump straight onto him said he's the worst signing and, and into my DM saying, because I was the one that announced him for the club saying, you know, why, what have you done? Don't recommend us any more Aussies and all this other stuff. But I had a laugh because I, you know, one day I think Sammy's going to uh, come back on that pitch and he's just going to set it alight. And uh, we've seen it for the Socceroos when he represents Australia now. And um, yeah, I think he's, uh, he's, he's a right, uh, he's a right future prospect for that, for our club. And um, I think he'll be right once he, you know, just gets his feet on the ground. But it's nothing new, is it? Because I remember way back at, <clears throat> I'm not even going to mention which decade it was, but David Mills, which <laughs> obviously David Mills has has uh, connections with both Borough and Newcastle. Um, David yep. Mills used to be at the brunt end of uh, of the chicken run, as it was called. Uh, a bit like Terry Cochran, who used to, you know, winger who used to run up and down there, he used to have a go back at the fans. But Mills, he always <laughs> used to cop flack from fans at Ayrson Park. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason it was. So it's nothing new. Maybe it is a crutch that football fans need. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, one one that sticks out for me in our Premier League return, uh, Dave, was uh, the Barahans throw in. Remember that? Mm. <laughs> I mean, he did. Well, he couldn't he take a decent foul throw in. Throw could he? in. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, did, he did. He did do one throw in that was a foul throw in, and forever he was the worst <laughs> left back we've ever had in our life. And he has never ever let it down ever since. The man, if he walked through Middlesbrough, would be like, ah, oh, nice throw in. Yeah, you know, I mean that's one thing you're remembered for. So it's incredible that you know, as I said, there's just one moment in football that you know on the on the big stage that you can, oh, you know, human error, make a mistake or whatever it may be, and you know it's for you're forever remembered. I mean Joe Lumley, <laughs> I mean oh. Joe Lumley in recent times, oh. you know, we, he had a uh, he had a few bad games for us, but he'll be always remembered as probably one of the worst keepers for the borough, and we you know we put a lot of you know blame on him, so. But yet Joe Lumley, you know, is still a human and still, I think, you know, he went and had a, a pretty half-decent season at Reading last year. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, we are, as fans, the, the, probably the most harshest critics of the players sometimes. Yeah, and Definitely Steve, are. from a Newcastle perspective, who have been the recent fall guys? Well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we've had, you know, Dan Byrne is the, is the one who's getting the stick, but, you know, the list is endless. You know, it, 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 every couple of weeks it, it changes. Bruno Longstaff has, has been one. Uh, Miguel Almiron, probably, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, people saying he runs around like a headless chicken. There's no end product. Then last season he had a, you know, a season to remember. Um, it, you know, the list the list is endless. Nick Pope, another one mm. who, you know, isn't, isn't a yeah, fan's favourite as far as goalkeepers are concerned. You know, goalkeepers, probably the ones that get it in the neck the most. 
just you know because one error um, you know in a game stands out more than if a, a misplaced pass from you know your your best midfielder your best forward or uh, you know centre forwards get it but uh, yeah yeah I mean Newcastle fans I guess share it about you know we do share it around we don't we don't tend to stick on one player too long but it um, you know back in the day it used to be stick from the terraces now social media is the tool that you know people use to to, to to have their opinion and like ryan said before you know it's at the end of your fingertips we can react straight yeah. away now and yeah, um, everybody... you can hide behind a key keyboard you know it's, can, it's yeah. so easy yeah. now to, to to be a bit of a keyboard warrior isn't it yeah, yeah it there's is. plenty of them there's plenty of them around and, and and yeah and i mean it's why i guess the guidance is given to a lot of the players to you know to, you know be careful when you're on social media we saw yeah, off social media we, yeah can't we wait. saw earlier we saw earlier in the season when um, you know Bruno was 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 you know yeah. reacting to you know to, to to stuff that had been said about a, a game at you know a game at St James's Park. You know Newcastle gone through that hard start to the season. You know the, the you know got beat against Manchester City, lost that game against Liverpool, and you know he, he reacted and then and then you know yeah. yeah basically deleted the tweet you know almost immediately but it, you know some players are on social media they do read it and I guess you know the lesson for a player to learn is you've got to take the rough with the smooth and Eddie Howe often says it in his press conferences that you know from his perspective it's why he's not on social media because yeah you know it, it works both ways he said if I was to read he said he used to read newspapers and he said when I was a player he said I, I remember reading a newspaper he says I'd had a very good game he says I got man of the match and um, he said I, I you know I really I really enjoyed the praise that I got and he said um, you know it was it was great he says but that gave me like a that gave me a buzz but it gave me like a, a an overinflated opinion I guess he says and he said the following week he said you know I didn't get man of the match I, I didn't have a particularly good game and, and you know I, I read a lot of the criticism and he says and that hurt and this was in a newspaper and he said from that day on I decided not to read newspapers and I've not I've not got onto social media for the same reason because he said it affects you in in both ways you know if you, he says you can get carried away with the praise but you can also get hurt by the criticism so the best thing you can do is concentrate on one game at a time Concentrate on being your best. Stick in a training and make sure that you, you know, you 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 are you are you are learning and getting better. You know, each each and every week. And he says, and and, and results will come. And that's his philosophy. It's it's a simple one, but it's it you mm. can see that you can see the reason that you know Eddie Howe is the way that he is. And he never gets carried away. And and in every press conference, there's always some kind of reference to, you know, PSG press conference will take place today and people will be saying you know uh, there'll be there'll be a question at some point about the game against West Ham coming up on Sunday and he'll go well we're not looking at that we're looking at West, we're looking at PSG you know we're focused on today's game we're not looking ahead we're not looking at the injury uh, the injuries that are mounting up and uh, etc we're looking at today's game where you know our job is to beat PSG uh, tomorrow and, and and it's as simple as that really with Eddie and you know a lot of people a lot of people won't do that a lot of people will be looking ahead and trying to plan and you know but why why do that you know so it it's a simple it's a simple method it's a simple ethos that Eddie has but it's one that's working for Newcastle United and it's one that certainly works for him. But yeah, the, the scapegoat thing, I think Eddie as well protects his players. I think managers protect their players, um, you know, and some some don't. I mean, you know, look at what's happening some with uh, yeah. Ten Hag at Manchester United, you know. He's, exactly. Um, he, exactly. He's, he seems to be a bit like the headmaster at school, you know, you you know, treat them mean, mm. keep them keen and, you know, um, <laughs> you know, meet out a bit of punishment here and there. And if they don't do what I say, it's my way or the highway. You know, if I yeah. say jump, you say Back how high. Yeah, whereas Eddie seems to be more of a man manager. Put your arm round a player. I can imagine Eddie can lose his rag as well, mate. I think if he's not yeah. getting a, if he's not getting what he wants. Look at Ryan Fraser at Newcastle. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, he, he got a couple of chances, um, and, and and then Eddie binned him off to the, the training with the under twenty three. So, yeah, I I think I think he's got like a you know he's he, he's a an iron fist and a velvet glove kind of manager. Eddie, um, you know, do what he says. Do what do what he wants you to do. You won't go far wrong with him, but uh, cross him at your peril, really. Mm-hmm. And I wonder we got we can't forget obviously the third northeast team in, in Sunderland. Obviously, I'm trying to think back to some Sunderland scapegoats. So, well, and one that springs to mind from from recent years would be Jack Rodwell. Uh, the Jack Rodwell saga at Sunderland. I remember if you're a Sunderland fan and get in on the WhatsApp if uh, if if there's any others yeah, that you can help, think of. We? But we, for we me, need, we need help for from me. The it's, yeah, it's Jack Rodwell. I mean, it, I, I reckon if your face doesn't cringe when you, 
his name as a Sunderland fan, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't know what's going on because I'm pretty confident he was around 10 million uh, and he was on wages of about 70, 75,000 uh, on a five-year contract. And um, it looked like it was going to be positive. Uh, but then he he got an injury. Uh, he was injury plagued, I would argue. Uh, I think he managed less than 45 league starts. Let me get the stats. 45 league starts in three and a half seasons. So he played 76 appearances in all, uh, but few, very few of those games did he impress in. <laughs> Uh, and there was the odd occasion where Rodwell would, uh, couldn't be bothered to break into a run and it looked like he would be capable of performing. But uh, there was a occurrence that arrived uh, once in every blue moon. Uh, and then it was the Netflix documentary where Rodwell uh, was caught seemingly refusing to play for the play for Sunderland. Yeah. So, and um, the Netflix documentary revealing that he was missing training sessions, he was feigning injuries, uh, and then Sunderland approached him to, you know, say, look, you don't want to be here. Clearly, you're, you're faking injuries. You don't want to be on the pitch for us. You you know, you just, you've, you've had enough. He refused. He did it. He said, no, I'm, you still pay, pay me. I don't want to go anywhere sort of thing. So it was it was a crazy, crazy uh, little moment there for Jack Rodwell at Sunderland. And it, one that ended quite poorly. But yeah, again, you know, one thing that we might haven't touched on there, um, and we've I know you've spoken about them, Steve, is, is the documentaries in Netflix and um, yeah. You know, seeing even further, you know, behind the scenes footage, you know, can often lead to even more stick from fans on players because you see a different side to them, don't you? In these documentaries, you see how they react in the dressing room, some stuff that was normally off limits, training grounds, you know, when they do have a full out from the manager, there's normally a camera there now. And especially if there's a documentary, you know, they, they seemingly show it. And, you know, fans watch those documentaries and latch on to, you know, everything, you know, and whether, doc- and, you know, we know, you you know, Steve's an actor. He knows it well that, you know, there's a lot can be done from uh, through the powers of editing to show, you know, yeah. what type of person or player you are. And, you know, if you if you only show the bad moments of one player on a, on a documentary, you know, a three-part documentary, the fans are going to latch on that that's a three bad, that's a bad player sort of thing. So it's, um you know, it, it, there's cameras everywhere. There's, there's better, you know, insight to the club than ever before. There's, you know, stuff that was off limits for, you know, and sanctuaries for years in, dressing rooms and you know we, we spoke about owners coming in and stuff like that you know more access to players means more you know insight into what who they are as, as people sort of thing and you know sometimes you know it doesn't take a good person to be a good footballer sort of thing and you know it's uh you know it can be sort of something that the fans latch onto and and seemingly need to uh you know like to be the first ones to boo when they do something wrong Mm, the Rodwell one was uh, was was amazing. I mean, that just went on and on and on and oh. on, and um, it was that was it. Probably one of the biggest farces in football. That it really was. That's what I remember. It is. Yeah, yeah. I remember. It. I can't remember another. You know, I'm sure Sunderland fans will be in touch. But um, yeah, one. I think the only one that I can remember again in my time would be Lee Camp. I think Lee Camp's saga at Sunderland was was quite uh, a farce as well. But Jack Rodwell recently, in recent years, was yeah. When 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 he was caught feigning the injury and. Um, and you know, and then they said, right, you don't want to be here, but you know, let's tear up your contract. He said, no, 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 I love the club. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's funny when money comes into it. Yeah, Sunderland fans, if you want to put your suggestions forward, scapegoats, uh, which players have you been very quick to criticise uh, over the last couple of decades? You can WhatsApp us O double three or O four three two thousand and two. And worth mentioning, on Friday we're going to be joined by Ted, big Sunderland fan. Uh, Ted's going to be joining us as part of the North East Footy Breakfast. He's going to be joining us permanently. Uh, but he uh, yeah. has to chip in on Friday for the not-so-small matter of Sunderland against Borough at the weekend. But, you know, we'll get on to mm-hmm. that a bit later on. So, uh, it, you know, it's not by choice that we don't have SAFC representation right now. <laughs> it is we are coming. Looking, it it's is coming. coming. It's coming because it is the North East Footy Breakfast. Well, we've got it some is. big games on this week, lads, for the North East Footy teams. And, Steve, I need to ask you... What's more important? Is it PSG or West Ham for Newcastle this week? Oh, drum roll. West Ham. West Ham. West Ham. Ham. He's gone against yeah. the Champions League. There you go. See? West Ham. West, so West Ham because West Ham because you want to be back in the Champions League next year. Uh, Newcastle United fans want to be in the Champions League next year. So Just go you know, and win we it. have to We've got to find consistency. We have to find consistency. We've got to be, we've got to be a team that's in and around that top four every year now. Um, you know, and 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 
West Ham is where your bread and butter is. You know, we've got we've got to win that game. We've got to, we've got to go there, give a good account of ourselves, not get beaten. Keep the run going if you can. I mean, like a one-one, a nil-nil one, down there would be a satisfactory result. Um, with a full strength team I've got no doubt we could go down there and beat them but you know a lot depends on the injuries you know we know Anthony Gordon's going to be suspended we'll find out more today from Eddie Howe as to what the injury is with Joe Linton um, we know we've got no Harvey Barnes we've got you know we, we, we're starting to we're starting to struggle you know with, with you know the the injuries that we've got Callum Wilson and Botman you know Eddie Howe said that they're probably going to be out the international break was it a bit of kidology with PSG ahead are Botman or Wilson are both going to be involved tonight um you know we, we will wait and see but we are missing some key players and that is that that is going to be a concern but yeah the psg is huge uh, the PSG game is huge tomorrow. Um, it's Champions League back on Tyneside for the first time in 20 odd years, and we will enjoy that for the spectacle it is. Newcastle will give the best, you know, will give it the, the best effort. They'll give it a good go. Uh, we've seen what they can do with a, you know, with what, what I would have called the, the the B team against Man City. They've beaten the the treble winners, the European champions, one nil in the Carabao Cup. Um, both teams making. You know, numerous changes, 10 changes to Newcastle's team, eight changes to Man City's team. So, that excuse of Man City fielding a weaker team couldn't come into it last week. They were on a level pegging last, last week, and Newcastle got through the next round. So, looking at this game against PSG, um, Newcastle will put out their best side and give it their best effort, I'm sure. And um, the occasion is the only thing I think that can affect Newcastle. Uh, tomorrow, you know, if they end up playing the game, uh, playing the occasion and not the game, that's my biggest fear. They could end up, yeah. they could end up losing the game. But I genuinely feel that Eddie Howe has has got his team focused. I think he's got the squad focused. I think that when people come in and they do a job, they do they, they know what they're doing. Um, it's it's there's organisation there. It's something we haven't seen since you know since the days of Sir Bobby Robson. Um, to to a point, maybe. He's Pardew because he got us to he got us to he got us into European slots the last time you know when he was manager. Mm. So you know, organisation's the key. But yeah, I I've got to say the West Ham game is is the more important game this week purely because we've got to we've got to you know continue. We've got to find that consistency, and we could we could potentially book the trend because you know Dan mm. Ashworth said it on the uh, the documentary that was on Amazon um, statistically football teams that qualify for Europe um, for the first time in as many yeah. years as Newcastle just have always have a below par season they always underperform in the league so Eddie Howe pulled off the great escape got Newcastle United from bottom of the league to safety Eddie Howe got Newcastle United um, into the Champions League at the first mm -hmm. time of Askin and got us back to Wembley in the Carabao Cup final is Eddie Howe going to be the first manager in recent years, to book the trend and get Newcastle what a United it would be. Back, what into a Europe, it would be. back into Europe, back into the Champions yeah. League for a second year running in their first year back in Europe. That yeah. probably would be his biggest achievement because he will then know that he's found the consistency. And then off the back of that, we will have had another transfer window in January and we will have had yep. it. Uh, we will be going into the biggest, and I say that next summer will be our biggest window to date. I think yeah. then Newcastle will seriously be considered as, you know, title title contenders next year. Yeah. Let's, can, let's not forget. They've yeah, got to get it right this year. It has been done mm. in the North East before because McLaren did it with the Borough. Did he mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Two successive right, so, years qualified. Yeah, it was the UEFA Cup. But, uh, he, he, <laughs> yeah, but that's still the trend exactly that you need to book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you he win, did, you yeah. win, you win the EFL Cup. You qualify for Europe, job. and then uh, and then you qualify by the league. You know, the following year. So um, that's some good because. Tell, yeah. And then he That's went. Then point. he went to England. And then he job. went to England. Same and the rest is potentially history. Eddie Howe. <laughs> could could be good history rewriting itself. Eddie Howe does the oh, same. Oh yes. Newcastle and takes over for Southgate. Let's start so, a rumor. I heard no, a rumor. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. started there. There it is. That's so it could happen yeah. again. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, Steve, as well, just quickly, before we talk, obviously talk about... And we need some ads to play. Tonight. We need to play some ads. So uh, and we, we do need to play some ads. I'll ask the question quickly. Uh, obviously, we see team selection and squad depth being tested now. Um, and, I, I, and obviously, with, you're, you're expecting changes. Obviously, you've got some injury clouds there. But is it uh, feasible that Nick Pope is going to play every game for Newcastle this season? Because he's been one uh, player that has always been the first on the team sheet. We've seen every game... In Champions League, Carabao Cup, 
um, and obviously in the Premier League as well, that Nick Pope is just is, is always there. That hasn't he hasn't gone to Carrius or or um, uh, in any other backup keepers. So is Nick Pope going to play every game for Newcastle in every league this season? I thought we would have seen uh, Dubravka, but unfortunately for yeah. Dubravka, he was ill. So yeah, he, he, you know that that illness ruled him out. Uh, Carrius had just come back. Uh, from from an injury as well, so that was why he wasn't available. So that was what Eddie Howe said in the press conference last week. Um, but it is conceivable that Nick Pope could go all the way through the season and play every game if he avoids injury and suspension. Yeah, I, mm. I mean certainly the Carabao Cup. I think Eddie Howe will look at that and say, you know, if there's a, if there's a, if there's a chance to rest him, that's the competition you're going to rest him. Um, yeah. But we've got Manchester United away in the next round, and, exactly. and he's not going to do that. He's not going to play Debravka at Manchester United. And I guess we've also got to consider that potentially Debravka doesn't want to be cup tied in case he gets a move in January because he, yeah. he he went to Manchester United because he wanted to play football. He went down yeah. there and didn't get a game. He comes back to Newcastle. He's still got to be keen on a move if he's not playing regular first team football. So Agreed. I don't think they'll want a cup tied. Uh, Dubravka won't want to be cup tied. So I think if we're going to see anybody in goal, it'll be Carrius. It won't be at Manchester United. They'll want to play a strong team. They'll want to get through the next round. And Pope will want to get to Wembley to make up for missing out last year. I think. So I think yeah. that's I think that that's the answer there. But yeah, I mean, it is conceivable that Pope will end up playing more. He's certainly a, your, your number one in the Premier League. Uh, so you can't see anybody coming in from them. And the Champions League, I think there'll only be a change in in the sticks for for the Champions League. Should Newcastle either go out? of the competition, i.e., you know, they, they know they can't progress. Or if they do progress before their final group game, then I think you'll see people come in and, and you know, have a have a run out because that's the way to rotate things in, in, in the Champions League, you know, to, to do that if you get the opportunity. So mm-hmm. that, that that that's where I see that's where I see things, yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break. Uh, recharge our glasses. Uh, no music this time. We'll just get the ads out of the way because we've still got lots to chew over. Uh, yeah, I'm just we looking do. at the time. It's already 20 to 9. Heaven forbid. Look at uh, us it, is, it is the North East Footy Brecky, uh, right across the North East on the Count the Red and the Toon. More chat after this. Now then, do you do sales? Do you fancy a great career challenge? Well, the Red, the Cat and the Toon has a full-time vacancy for a special sales exec. Not only will you be responsible for generating the vital revenue needed to see the North East's newest radio business grow, but you'll grow too. Show us you can do the business and you'll soon become Group Sales Director. Our stations are flying. We have the three legends back on air. Then there's the one that most are talking about, the North East Footy Brecky Show. And there's more to come. Gumption and creativity count more to us than years. You may only have two or three years selling experience, but if you get what we're trying to achieve, you will be the right fit. You'll ideally be located in Tyneside or Wearside. This will be a hybrid working role. It's a full-time basic plus commission position. So come on, think you have what it takes? Then give us a shout. Email any of the three stations. That's hello at the tuneuk.com, hello at the catuk.com, or hello at the reduk.com. Clark. My debut 1990 September, Bristol City away to get that opportunity, what thousands of Geordies only dream of. Hignett. Playing against Chelsea and then to score the first goal there is something that still lives with me now and it's what most people will talk to me about. Williams. I first goal of a sudden underway at Leicester. It was a left foot volley. I didn't realise my left foot was for kicking a ball with as well. I thought it was just for standard. Across the North East, it's the three legends. Fridays at 6 on The Cat, The Red and The Two. Hey! Steve and Rye. The North East Footy Breakfast. Right across the North East. The Red, The Cat and The Two. That's just reminded me that that little plug for the uh, the Three Legends 6 o'clock Friday nights just reminded me. I'm doing a bit of research at the moment, fellas. So no. uh, as much as much as it's, you know, it's melting the uh, the skin and the flesh off my fingers to touch it. Um, I'm I'm buying I'm buying merch from all three of the Northeast football clubs uh, because we've got Ugh. we've got to kit the boys out uh, in shorts and socks. So it's a very interesting comparison: the price of a pair of first team shorts 
and first team socks from each of the northeast clubs. So I did Sunderland and Newcastle yesterday. I did use gloves, right? I did use gloves before yeah, touching it. Yeah, good. I'm glad. And yep. uh, it's going to be the Borough Club shop today. So um, yeah, buy the uh, whole shop. The, uh, the I mean, what in depth research? You know, a long term in depth <laughs> research uh, that we're carrying out on this show. Uh, just to bring you a comparison of kit costs, we shall reveal all tomorrow once I've been to the club shop I today love in it. the borough. Yeah. Well, let's no, let's look at the uh, borough then, Ray. It is an interesting one, that's for sure. But yes, the uh, Middlesbrough Mammoth Mountain continues tonight uh, as we take on Cardiff at home uh, in what we're calling the Andy Cub Andy Campbell Derby. <laughs> I, 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 I know that's <laughs> oh, obviously we got Andy Cammy Campbell. On the show. <laughs> He's, uh, he no. played both. A uh, good a good friend of the the, the show, obviously, and uh, Andy Campbell, the Andy Campbell Derby. Uh, playing both uh, for Middlesbrough and Cardiff City did Andy. So uh, it's going to be an interesting game tonight. Obviously, Middlesbrough uh, looking to continue their recent revival uh, with a fourth win on the bounce. Can you believe it, Borough fans? We're going for our fourth win on the bounce uh, as we host, obviously, Cardiff City at the Riverside. Under the lights, uh, Middlesbrough obviously overcame Watford 3-2 uh, on Saturday afternoon, um, and then the uh, visitors uh, in Cardiff rose into the top six uh, with a 2-0 win at home over Rotherham United. So both teams are uh, coming off the back of collective wins. Cardiff, obviously, uh, in a lot much uh, stronger form. They have had four wins on the bounce in the league. The only loss coming in the League Cup to Blackburn, which was a 5-2 loss, but four wins on the bounce on pure championship form, where Middlesbrough, obviously, only two wins on the bounce in championship form. So it's not going to be an easy night uh, for Carrick's Middlesbrough. Uh, and it's going to be a great test to see whether this clicked and whether this revival uh, can can actually, you know, stand against some of the, the more performing teams. Obviously, Cardiff on 16 points. Middlesbrough in, and sitting in sixth position. Middlesbrough only on eight points, sitting in 21st position. Uh, and obviously, Cardiff on a recent trip up to Sunderland, getting the job done in a 1-0 victory uh, last time they're in the northeast. So, uh, and defending and parking the bus, if you will. Will we see the same or similar uh, tactics used tonight against Carrick's men, or will Cardiff come out more rampant? It will time will tell. Uh, but it's incredible to see uh, Middlesbrough now slowly, but surely dragging ourselves away from the danger. We've propelled ourselves out of the relegation zone now, and we're into 21st place, uh, and victory over Southampton uh, ended ended that five-game run without a championship success. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, look, it'll it'll be interesting to see uh, what Errol Balut's side uh, we'll, we'll um, you know, bring tonight. Um, he's got uh, some great, you know, some great players in there, um, and, and a new look Cardiff team. Obviously, buoyed by the return of Aaron Ramsey, one of the club legends. Um, not the Aaron Ramsey we're thinking of, Borough fans, but uh, obviously the Wales superstar Aaron Ramsey uh, going back to Cardiff, uh, and it seemed to change their fortunes around. Um, Cardiff obviously bouncing back and forth into the lower league. And uh, last season, but um, yeah, cut off up and about this season uh, and really performing well. Obviously, you know, you're in sixth position for a reason. Strong start to, the, to their year has uh, made them a, a team to be, you know, to be to be feared of. And obviously getting the job done at Sunderland uh, showed, you know, they're willing to play different tactics if they need to against, you know, a, you know, a fairly attackive team. Yeah. Uh, Middlesbrough, obviously, we're you know we're we're still frail in defence. I would argue, Dave. Uh, we've still mm. got some issues there. Fair, we've obviously fair. will Dara Lenahan come back? Uh, Lewis O'Brien in the left back position. Anthony Jickstill's just returned, but will Tommy Smith start? Where does Vandenberg sit in now? Is he our new left left back? Uh, will Paddy McNair partner Dale Fry? Obviously, even though we got the win over at Watford. We saw defensively we were still, you know, uh, very, very open for, for being scored against. And will Cardiff capitalise on that tonight? Will be time will tell. I'd love to see, um, yeah, I'd love to see a shutout and see some clean sheets rolling in for Middlesbrough. Just to ease the, the you know, the woes and the fears because the, at the moment our defence is, is something that I think is still um, very scary. But I'm expecting Middlesbrough to get the win tonight uh, and I'm going for a 2-1 victory to the Borough. Um, and I think Riley McGrew will be on the score sheet again because he's the GOAT, and I'm going to call him before the game and uh, and just give him a big rev up, I will, <laughs> the young Riley. So, uh, yeah, I'm expecting Middlesbrough to get the job done at home, under the lights, packed Riverside Stadium, uh, and uh, we'll get continue this climb up the table uh, in a 2-1 victory. Have we got a watch-along on the red tonight? 
We certainly do. I will be live. I will be live. 5.45 a.m. me. Wow. Uh, getting up for the Middlesbrough game. So it's a 5.45 a.m. start for me. Uh, Which in strip Australia are you going to wear? Morning. Yeah, I was just going to say. I'm going yeah. to have to put the Riley McGree one on. Surely. A new West. A new The way strip. I just want to know what you're going yeah. to do next if Riley does score because uh, at the weekend you were kissing the shirt live on camera. I mean, what is well, the was, next level? What is the next level of well, homage been, to the girl? I promised my wife. I promised my wife that I won't be asking him to marry me anymore. Um, okay, so that's okay. obviously got to go out the window. So we, we, uh, you know, I can't. I can't. You know, I can't. You know, be, be asking him to marry me every game. But um, I, I did promise if he got the hat trick on the weekend, it was nude down the street. Luckily. Uh, for the neighbours, more more so than me, um, that he didn't end up scaring the hat trick, and I got to keep the clothes on. Um, but uh, I don't know what's going to happen if he continues this run of form that he's had. Um, obviously, one of my favourite players. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely going to have to uh, yeah get, have calm it down because it's going to be real early start if you're waking the neighbours at five forty five a.m. But um, yeah, look, I'm just hoping for a, um, a a defensive effort from Middlesbrough tonight, um, and obviously without Lewis O'Brien. Uh, which is going to be testing in that left back role. Who steps in there? Um, and obviously, yeah, the form of Riley McGree at the moment and Joshy Coburn um, up front. I think uh, Middlesbrough can get it done, but it's going to be a very good test uh, to see where we're at against a, a top six team, lads. Mm. And and our reach knows no bounds because I can tell you now, Andy Campbell will be joining us for a few minutes before we finish this show. So he's uh, he's agreed go. to come on the North East Footy Breaking. The Andy, yeah, he said he wants Campbell to see Derby. this Aussie start <laughs> kissing an Andy Campbell shirt. That's what it is. That's what it is. So we'll have a quick chat with uh, yeah. former Borough and Cardiff striker Andy Campbell uh, just for a couple of minutes before we finish tonight. And Sunderland Love and Newcastle, it. of course, will focus on what you've got to do tomorrow. Mm. But yeah, especially well, for Steve. Agree. What do you reckon, Steve? Just to give Steve. Is Barrow going to continue winning? Just to give Steve a little flavour uh, so he can, uh, you know, wet his juices uh, ahead of what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Love the it. Carabao Cup song. It is. It's, Love it's, it. It's the Carabao Cup. Uh, hang on, I've lost it. Carabao, <laughs> the the, 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 the Carabao Champions League Cup. That's what it is. I'm, I'm it is yeah. Got a, I, I got myself an the bridge built by Middlesbrough. The bridge built by Middlesbrough. <laughs> Isn't it? Letting great, those Middlesbrough built Tyne in. Bridge and all that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. At least, Fantastic. at least we're not saying Saudi cash, Steve. You know, the Middlesbrough built Tyne Bridge is replaced. Are. That one is replaced. We're looking, looking at this game tonight, right? Yeah. Twenty first against sixth. It, it yep. on on paper, looking at the league table, this this has got a card of win all over it. But yeah. when you start looking at the recent results, it it's it's going to make a fool of the bookmakers. I think they're offering three to one um, for an away win tonight, five to six for a home win, draw eleven to four. Um, I I can't see past tonight. I think Borough are going to win. I think I think it's a one yes. I think it's a one nil. I think it's a one yes, nil for I think I think I think this is going to be every bit as tight as the Cardiff Sunderland game. But I think yeah. I think <laughs> I'm going to say every I, bit I, as tight as Dave's wallet there. Every bit <laughs> as tight as Dave's wallet. Uh, yeah, I think genuinely. I think genuinely, Borough have found the found their rhythm, um, much like Sunderland had, uh, you know, prior to playing Cardiff. But I think I think the difference is going to be, you know, your your hero, right? I think he's going to be. Yep. I think he's going to be the difference. He seems to be in a rich vein of form, and I I think he's going to be the difference tonight. I think it's going to be one nil. I think the Riverside will be bouncing tonight. So I am going to stick my neck on the line and say that it's a one nil to the Borough. Oh, I genuinely may think the get Messiah one. Steve Wraith come true, and I love it. I love hearing you back on board with the Middlesbrough train. We built your bridge, and now we're building. You know, we're building the Premier League for next season, mate. Don't you worry. Because we're on the way back. We're going all the way straight through to the top and uh, back in Champions Leagues before you know it with our own Riley McGree, you know, image above Riverside Stadium as we welcome Bayern Munich uh, in a couple of seasons to come. I, I believe it now. So and it's great uh, that it's the championship games are all over Sky Sports tonight to prevent Luton versus Burnley being televised. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess, I mean, guess who's joined us? Year. Guess who's joined us? Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing? Dazza. Ah, Dazza. How are you, son? Yeah, Dazza, really good. You thank you. Morning, mate. Yeah, I yeah. missed you this morning. We well, had the Curry Boys against me, mate. I was, <laughs> was, I was really outnumbered that bad again. Yeah, yeah. 
They were talking about the meals they had when they kicked off the show. <laughs> I'm sitting here again with my two minute noodles, mate. And uh, it's yeah, just it no was, need for uh, it. It was a rough start. No, no, I know. That's what I said, Dad. That's what I said. So I'm really excited about the game tonight. I, I, I think I'm going with Steve on this. Um, I think it's going to be. Steve's got the Riverside. What's the borough? <laughs> well, he's, oh. he's welcome to come down, Steve. You know, come on down, Steve. Well, I, you know, I do know the chairman's daughter. I've, I've, I've starred oh, in a couple oh, of yeah. films with Victoria, yes. so yeah, yeah I she's could, an actress as well. As I stuff. could pick yeah. the phone up to Victoria and get a ticket if yeah. I want. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Give me with... a private jet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's going to be a very tight game. Uh, you know, Cardiff and Normugs, they're, they're going to come here tonight and uh, they're going to be looking for a win. Um, I, yep. think, I think Riley McGree will be a, a crucial player yes. yet again yeah. uh, yeah. in this. Yes, it does. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm going for 1-0. I've gone for 1-0. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. No, I think it is going to be tough. I think Cardiff are going to look to shut up shop, I think. But... Uh, it's, as I said, the, the big test for me and the big question is going to be around Middlesbrough's defense. Can we get the job done? Can we hold out a team that is known, you know, that no, that can can you know can score, is in a bit of form, um, and we need to get defensive. If we get it right defensively tonight, I think we're okay up front. I think Joshy Coburn, Riley McGree, Matty Crooks, all hitting a bit of form, yeah. but uh, still questions for me around the defense and whether we can keep Cardiff out. So yeah. hoping for a uh, yeah for a big performance, but. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough test, Staz, and uh, I'm I'm welcoming it though because you know it, it, it's you know it's you got to go against the big teams to see where yep. you're at. Yeah, you, you know you can't you can't count the revival. You know when you're playing bottom you know bottom three four teams, so yeah. um, you've got to test this revival. Yeah, this clicking, a big test, um, against the big teams, so well, it's a big test. How big exactly. is how big is Cardiff? I suppose that's the question. One man who's been there and done it is Andy Campbell, who joins us this morning on the North East Footy Breakfast Andy. Show. Andy. Andy. Hey. How big is Cardiff as a football club, mate? It doesn't get any bigger as a as a football club. It's a it's a huge city. Um, you know, obviously they're they're playing the English league and, and the rivalries there. And um, I, I know they want to be bigger than what they are. They want to be um, Premier League where, where they have been previously. But um, don't run before you can walk. You know, they've had it. They're in a transition like we're in a transition. Um, but they brought in some big players in the summer. They brought in a new manager. They've gone down yeah, a they have. route. Um, and having players like Aaron Ramsey, um, you know, what I mean, makes it's, it's I think sets their stall out. You know, it, it, bringing that experience and. And I think it's uh, it's it's paying dividends for them. Um, they had the South South Wales derby um, a couple of weeks ago, and I think that's revitalised their season. Um, they've turned things around since that date. Um, first time they've won the, the beaten Swansea in what ten years or so. So um, I think Middlesbrough will uh, be in for a tough game tonight. Um, I think last year with the beat us three two at home for the first half the blew us away. Um, and the second half we were we were huffing and puffing and trying to get back we got back to 3-2 and mm. it won't be an easy game but it won't be an easy game for Cardiff as well because mm. we've we've hopefully turned a corner um, we're playing with a bit of confidence we've got a, a number 9 now who's hungry he scored a goal at the weekend and he'll want to he'll want to add to those numbers uh, tonight hopefully and we we must call it the Andy Campbell derby mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm fully on board with that obviously a, a legendary striker for both clubs Andy you got to I've got to. I've got to say though, Andy. I'm sorry. I'm on the Middlesbrough. I'm on the Middlesbrough side tonight. I think we're going to get it done. But um, obviously, good memories uh, at Cardiff. Yeah. Oh, listen. Yeah. Amazing memories. You know, on the field and off the field. My my, my, my young family was, was 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 started there. My my daughter was born there, and um, I had yeah. amazing times. Met amazing people. So it, it'll always hold a, a big place in my heart I live in Middlesbrough now so you know we're back in Middlesbrough born in Middlesbrough so um, I know and hand on heart you know I'm a Middlesbrough fan I want Middlesbrough to win tonight you know and it's, yeah, uh, it's always going to yeah. be it's, it's, it's always it. it's always a it's always a game that I that I probably dread you know because of social media because yeah. people make a, such yeah. a big thing of it they try to trip me up a little bit but <laughs> listen I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Middlesbrough fan you know so it's a, it's, it's, it's a no brainer for me Oh, I absolutely love it. I love that it's the Andy Campbell derby as well, but so you heard it here first. The Andy Campbell, Andy Campbell derby is going the way of Middlesbrough. What's your prediction for score, Andy? Um, I, I think if somebody, after what happened at the weekend, if somebody offered me a draw right now, I'd probably take it. But with the way the games have gone, um, I think with it being a midweek game and the continuation from the weekend, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping for a win. And if I think Dell will score, will score, go 2-1. 2 1. 2 1. Always agreed That's with the Wraith boy. Look at us go. Look at us go. Yeah. No, Wraith, Wraith said 1 0. Oh, Wraith I said 1 0. Oh, okay. sorry. It was yeah. Rye that said 2 1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. see? Two two Middlesbrough legends in Rye and Andy. I can't. Okay, no, I'm not a legend. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we look at us agreeing. Do you know what I mean? Totally, so, but yeah, it's totally. going to be a great night. Great night um, under the you know under the night the lights of uh, Riverside Stadium. Uh, hopefully, Riley can get back on that score sheet again. 
uh, and continue the Aussie uh, sensation that is taking over Middlesbrough because uh, I really think that, you know, it's a great test for Middlesbrough to see if we are clicking Indeed. and if Michael Carrick has got us back uh, back playing, you know, good quality football against a good quality side in Cardiff. So the Andy Campbell derby will be resolved tonight, 7.45 p.m. UK time. I will be up at 5.45 a.m. for my watch along and uh, waking the neighbours. Good man, good man. We've got to give a plug as well for for, for the Cam Red Army, uh, Cam's Red Army, uh, which is going out on Thursday. Are you going to be reflecting back on the, uh, the Andy Campbell derby, Andy? Yes, of course, yeah. And I'm hoping I'll have a little bit of an insight from someone from uh, from Cardiff as well Ooh. who will obviously watch the game. Oh. So, yeah, so please please tune in, um, have a listen, uh, join in with questions like, like everything you show. always do. It's, it's amazing. Show. You know, I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. Loving it. Brilliant. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant, mate. Yeah. Well, look, we wish yeah. you well. It's uh, going to be a busy day for you. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you'll get many calls and many requests. Thanks for giving us five minutes this morning. Really appreciate no, my it. My pleasure. All the best, Andy. Take care, yeah. mate. Have a good Take night. It easy. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. Thanks, Bye buddy. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> Great lad. Great lad, Andy Campbell. Um, but a Bloody. man who knows exactly what it's legend. like to be in both camps. Absolutely. Yeah, um, legend. We're done. We're out of time, fellas. Good stuff. I'm off for a curry. Can't believe it. <laughs> and we're back into football already. Can you believe it? We've had a couple of breaks and we're back into football already. We've Indeed. got Middlesbrough Cardiff tonight. We've got Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. Oh, champion. I get them confused all the time. I'm sorry, yeah, 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 no, the Champions easy. League uh, against is it Paris? I, I can't. You know, they're a small club. I think yeah, in Paris, yeah, something yeah. like Paris that. Paris, uh, man. <laughs> and then oh, obviously oh, oh, oh. onto the weekend of fixtures as well. So big show, big week of football. We're back, baby. Northeast Brecky Show. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, Daz is up next with all his nonsense. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Thank you. Across Woo! the northeast. Have a good one, Daz. Have a good one. Cheers, and have a have a lovely day. From Wickham to Whitley Bay, Stony Gate to Shields, Doggy to Darlow Back Lane, Steve and Rye, the Northeast Footy Breakfast. Right across the Northeast, the Reds, the Tune, and the Cow.